Episode 181, The Big Reveal When he saw Luke, William was immediately reminded of what Lucas had told him. He was not pleased as he glared at Luke and said, Young man, don't you think it's inappropriate for you to be waiting outside my granddaughter's home in the middle of the night? Luke didn't understand why William was being hostile to him. So he immediately explained, I was told that Lisa had picked you up, so I wanted to see if you needed help with anything. No need, William replied. Please, leave. Lisa smiled at Luke awkwardly. She didn't know what was wrong with her grandfather either. Luke couldn't stick around any longer, so he politely said, Good night, and disappeared from their sight. Lisa... William said, Tell me honestly, are you in a relationship with this man? Grandfather, what are you talking about? She asked. Mr. Perez told me you're somebody's mistress, he scolded. Don't ever see that man again. Lisa was in shock. Then she began to feel a little angry. She hadn't expected Lucas to be this despicable. And about your boss, Emma, William continued. Miss Garcia is such a lovely woman. Why are you guys bullying her and going against her wishes? Grandfather, Lisa cried. Don't you know Charlotte was holding you hostage? She wanted to use you to threaten Emma. Emma was the one who got you out of there. Hostage, he said. I think there must be something wrong with your brain. Miss Garcia took good care of me, gave me good food and drinks, even took me out to fun places. It's nothing like you think. Lisa was speechless. She wasn't sure how to explain these scheming tactics of the entertainment industry to her grandfather. She felt a bit helpless. He was too easy for them to manipulate, she thought. And now, he's using their lies to hurt his own granddaughter. After William went to bed, Lisa gave Luke a call to apologize. I'm so sorry my grandfather was being rude today, she said. After Charlotte and Lucas locked him away for a few days and fed him lies, he's being critical of me as well. As long as he's okay, Luke replied. He sounded unfazed. I'm in the middle of a game right now. You should go get some rest. Okay, good night, she said. Luke's casual response made her feel a bit uneasy. But why should it bother me, she thought. It's not like he would ever have feelings for me. After hanging up the phone, Luke was also feeling a bit uneasy. He couldn't say that he wasn't affected by William's hostility. He'd only tried to be nice, but now a big misunderstanding had come of it. His heart felt a little strange. It was different than other times he had been upset. It was a cold winter's night. After taking a shower, Emma threw herself into Eric's warm embrace. As she leaned back and used his arm as a pillow, she said, Charlotte isn't normally like that. Why would she give me an international show? I thought she was dying to tear me apart. JK's show is very tempting to me, though. He hugged her and wrapped his strong legs around her gentle body, trapping her completely in his embrace. If she wants to give it to you, then take it, he replied. He knew no matter what Charlotte did, she would be pushing Emma towards Kaleidoscope. Of course, Emma was also aware of this. In that case, she said, do you want to come with me to London? When is it? He asked. She thought for a moment and then said, we should be leaving next Wednesday. It's almost the end of the year, he said, so there will be a lot of award ceremonies and events coming up. It's okay if you can't make it, she replied softly. To be honest, every time we've gone overseas, you've had to prepare for it well in advance. It's been making my heart ache. 
I'll only be in London for a week. While I'm there, just stay in New York and don't work too hard. Eric did not respond, but that didn't mean he didn't have his own thoughts on the matter. If I don't go, he thought, what are Charlotte's reporters going to take photos of? Nothing. The next morning, the biggest newspaper in the city published an article explaining everything that had happened in Brooklyn City Center. With Kaleidoscope's guidance, the media placed all the focus on Cheryl bullying Lisa. They focused on how she had schemed against her, slapped her, humiliated her, and made her kneel before her. The entire incident was depicted vividly in the article. It explains that, because of all this, Emma had decided to retaliate. The most startling revelation came from Kaleidoscope. The company exposed that Lisa was the fiancé to Eric's assistant, Luke. That's why Luke had come to the rescue. The company also stated that Emma and Eric had no special relationship to each other. They were merely friends and didn't need to provide any further explanation. After Kaleidoscope stepped out to protect its staff and make its statement, readers were quick to make their own judgment. As for the brand that had been affected by Cheryl the night before, its representative came forward and announced that the company wasn't happy with her, and because of her character, it would be blacklisting her. Of course, although most of the online commenters expressed their understanding for Emma's actions, a hidden danger had also been created for her. I never imagined the always calm Emma would have this side to her, one comment read. Five slaps in a row? How satisfying. Emma must have reached the limit of her tolerance for her to retaliate like this. I think she's so cool. I've followed many celebrities and seen those who treat their assistant as a normal person, but I've never seen anyone go this far to protect them. I don't have much to say, just one word, cool. But in the end, M also hit someone, one commenter pointed out. Doesn't this mean she's no different than Cheryl? You're just saying that because you weren't the one watching your friend get bullied. If you were, wouldn't you explode in anger too? I don't understand how Emma's assistant ended up as Cheryl's slave. This couldn't possibly have happened without a higher-up's permission. Are you still talking about that? It's Monday, and LM's new commercial is online. Let's watch it. That same day, the number of viewers who had watched Emma's interview on Talkmaster was revealed. Her popularity was comparable to some of the most famous actors and actresses. As soon as the LM commercial was released, it was a huge hit. In one day, it had reached over 10 million views. Regardless of everything else, it seemed Emma had a staple standing in New York for the time being. At least with her growing popularity, there was no need to worry that she would disappear from the limelight anytime soon. This should have been something for H-World Entertainment to celebrate. Even though Cheryl had been destroyed by one of her own people, Emma's career was gaining momentum. At this rate, it was only a matter of time before she surpassed Cheryl in popularity. In just three months, Emma had taken down everything in her way and come out on top. This shocked many people in the entertainment industry and made many more of them jealous. Episode 182, Fresh Sashimi. After everything that had happened, Charlotte realized the potential Emma had. So she decided to find a secret of Emma's to hold on to in the hope that someday it would help her control Emma. The day before their trip to London, Lisa was a bit distressed. She told Emma, I've noticed recently that someone's been stalking me. Emma furrowed her eyebrows. 
she had a feeling she knew why Lisa was being stalked. Charlotte must suspect that Lisa and Luke's relationship is fake, she thought. It's been quite a few days since the incident happened, she replied. Have you not seen Luke even once? Well, Lisa said, the day I brought grandfather home, Luke was waiting in the cold outside of my house out of kindness. He simply wanted to see if we were safe. But grandfather believed what Charlotte and that jerk told him. They said I was Luke's mistress. Now, Grandfather refuses to leave New York and insists on keeping his eye on me. Lisa, we got Luke to announce that he was your fiancé, not only to cover for Eric and me, but also to protect you, Emma said. If you feel bothered by it... No, I'm not bothered at all, she said, waving her hand. In fact... I feel like Luke has suffered a loss from this entire situation. Then what if we pretend that you two are living together? Emma said. Lisa's eyes widened. Huh? It's just pretend, Emma said. In truth, she had already sensed that Lisa had an inkling of interest in Luke. So she wanted to take advantage of the situation to create an opportunity for them to get together. I am afraid it isn't such a good idea, Lisa said as her cheeks flushed red. You're an engaged couple, Emma said. It's official. Lisa was stunned and began waving her hands vigorously. Emma, don't do this. Otherwise, things will be even more awkward between Luke and me. I truly do think of Luke as a friend. If you want me to play along with your act, I'm happy to do so, but asking me to pretend to live with him is too much. Emma turned to her suitcase and continued packing as Lisa spoke. Then she nodded her head and said, Just don't say I didn't give you a chance. What are you talking about? Luke is younger than me anyway, Lisa said incredulously. But the more flustered she became the more obvious it was that she was hoping something would happen. The only problem was that she felt she didn't compare to him, so she was feeling inferior. When I come back, I'll ask Luke what type of girl he's interested in, Emma said. Oh, isn't Mr. Roberts accompanying you? Lisa replied, trying to change the subject. Emma thought about all the invitations and appointments sitting on Eric's desk and shook her head. It's almost the end of the year, and events are coming up quickly, she said. I don't want him to be tired. Plus, to stop him from following me, I've moved up my flight a little. Don't forget. Don't worry, I already packed everything, said Lisa. She felt like she could finally relax now that Emma was no longer talking about her and Luke. Lisa was almost 30 and was not well-educated or high-achieving. She also enjoyed eating a little too much. She felt it would be impossible for an upper-class man like Luke to be interested in her. Sometimes she felt the impulse to chase after something special, but she felt she was past the age when she could throw herself into a situation in which she knew she couldn't succeed. Not long after Lisa left Tribeca, Luke appeared with a plate of fresh sashimi that had been flown in straight from Japan. Seeing Emma all alone in the living room, his expression was dull. Wasn't Lisa here just a moment ago? He asked. Where'd she go? Emma looked at the sashimi. With the diet plan she was on, there was no way she could eat it. She smiled at him and said, She just left her home. How about you chase after her? Ugh, forget about it then, he replied. Luke, can you be honest with me? Emma asked. You and Lisa. Before she could finish, Luke awkwardly cut in. Oh, that. He looked down at his well-polished leather shoes for a moment and then said, After seeing her get bullied, I was just feeling a bit of sympathy towards her. Just sympathy? Emma said. What else could there be? He asked. 
She lowered her head helplessly. She had realized a long time ago that Luke wasn't very in tune with his emotions, but this was ridiculous. It's nothing, she said, sighing. I can't eat any of it. Go and give it to Lisa. What if her grandfather misunderstands, he said. I don't think I should. He set the plate down on the table and walked out the door. Emma was left staring blankly at the plate of fresh sashimi. At that moment, Eric came out of the study after finishing his work. Seeing Emma looking helpless, he came up to her from behind and gave her a hug. What's wrong? he asked. You don't like to eat this either, right? she replied. He shook his head as she pulled out her phone and called Lisa. Luke just delivered a whole plate of fresh sashimi for you, she said. Do you want to take it home and enjoy it? Lisa had just gotten home. She found herself focusing not on the sashimi, but on Luke. She realized that she felt a little restless when she thought of him. But after considering her feelings for a moment, she still felt things weren't right. I'll have to pass, she said. I'm already home. I can't eat it, and Eric doesn't like it, Emma said. If you don't take it, I'll have to throw it out. No, don't throw it out. I'll come right away, Lisa said. She quickly changed her clothes and returned to Tribeca. Then she wrapped up the sashimi and took it home. But when she got there, she did not eat any of it. Instead, she lovingly placed it in the freezer. When someone has feelings for another person, they cherish anything that person gives to them. Even if Luke had only given her a tissue to wipe away her sweat, she would still have let it dry and kept it as a memory. After taking a shower, Emma lay on the bed and thought about the situation between Lisa and Luke. Suddenly, she felt a chill sweep past her chest. Eric had removed her robe without her even noticing. His warm hands ran down her body before pulling her into his embrace. She looked at him. His eyes seemed a little hazy and a little agitated. Of course, they also contained a trace of anticipation. Since you have to go away for so long, should you make up for it in advance? He asked. He didn't need to ask her, though. Her desire for him was just as strong. When two people truly love each other, even a simple glance is enough to stir up a tsunami of emotions. In an instant, both of their robes were strewn across the pure white bed. In the darkness, their bodies pressed firmly against each other, their sweat mingled, and their fingers intertwined. He had become accustomed to her soft moans and pants. When she climaxed, she would unconsciously bite his shoulder, making him love her from head to toe all over again. He wanted to be like this with her until the end of time. As for Emma, the thing that moved her the most was that no matter what Eric desired, no matter how vulnerable they both felt, once they were finished, he would still pull her sweaty body into his embrace. Episode 183 What an Idiot Eric embraced Emma tightly. He didn't need to express anything or give her any comforting words. A tight embrace was better than anything he could say. A moment later, with her still in his embrace, he suddenly sat up. Just as he was about to stand up from the bed, he felt her pull him back. He looked at her curiously and saw her clinging to his chest. He turned on the bedside lamp and gently stroked her back. Then he smiled and said, Aren't you going to take a shower? I just want you to hug me like this, she replied, burying her head in his chest with a cute expression on her face. I don't want to be apart from you. Didn't you tell me not to go to London with you? he asked. 
I just don't want you to be too tired, she thought. And I don't want to be too tired myself. Both of them already understood the situation. But now that Eric had made spoiling his wife his career, he couldn't possibly let her go to London by herself. He did not tell her his plans, though. He simply waited to give his adorable wife another surprise. That night, the couple did not sleep. They remained in each other's arms and chatted the night away. In the blink of an eye, it was already time for Richard and Lisa to pick up Emma and take her to the airport. However, up until she had to leave, she still clung to Eric, unwilling to let him go. Wait for me, she said. He reached out his hand and gently stroked her hair. The wedding ring on his finger sparkled in the morning sun. When they arrived at the airport, Lisa realized she'd forgotten her passport, but there wasn't enough time for her to go back for it, and she knew her grandfather was out on his morning walk. Em thought about her old home and remembered that it wasn't far from Kaleidoscope, so she told Lisa to call Luke. She knew Lisa had the habit of hiding a spare key. Lisa hesitated for a moment, but she quickly concluded that her work was more important than her confusing emotions. So she reluctantly gave him a call. Luke, she said when he picked up. What is it? he asked. Uh, well, I forgot my passport. Do you think you could drop by my house and get it? There's a spare key hidden inside the mailbox, and my passport should be sitting on top of my bed. Luke was actually quite busy at the moment. Eric had given him a lot of documents that he needed to deliver. If it were anyone else, he would have shrugged them off. But since it was Lisa, no matter how inconvenient it was, he felt he couldn't refuse. You wait there, Luke replied. He was well aware their boarding time was approaching. So he immediately drove to Lisa's house and found the spare key. The inside of Lisa's home looked pretty much the same as when Emma had lived there. This was not the first time Luke had been there, but without Lisa around, he felt quite nervous. When he pushed open the door to Lisa's bedroom, he saw that her passport was indeed sitting on the bed. But beside it was a pile of her bras and underwear. Lisa had been in such a rush that she didn't have time to tidy up. Luke blushed as he picked up the passport and hurried out. In his heart, he felt it would only be right for him to look at a woman's undergarments if she was his future wife. Because he was so flustered, he ran into a chair on his way to the door. He let out a painful cry and grabbed his leg before limping back to the car. He was still limping when he got out of his car in front of the airport but he pretended nothing had happened as Lisa ran up to meet him. I'm so sorry I made you run around like this, she said. It's okay, he replied as he handed her the passport. Have a safe trip. Lisa hurried back into the airport. She was in such a rush that she hadn't noticed Luke's pained expression. Only when she was out of sight did he finally lift up his pant leg to take a look. A chunk of skin from his left knee had been scraped off. What an idiot, he thought. Because the airport departure lounge was on the second floor, Emma and Richard had witnessed the entire scene. It looked like he hurt himself pretty badly, Richard teased as he sipped his coffee. When two blockheads come together, there's bound to be a good show, Emma said, laughing. Isn't this exactly what love is like, she thought. It turns a person into an idiot and makes them do stupid things. Emma was afraid her fans would see her, so she stayed in her seat and didn't walk around. Even so, a familiar tall skinny man spotted her and approached her. He was the reporter from her vision who had spotted her and Eric at the airport a while ago. Emma had a good memory, especially when it came to people with bad intentions. She quickly remembered the look in the man's eyes and wondered what his motive was. Just like last time, 
The man greeted her politely and then handed her a business card. Miss Miller, he said, do you still remember me? You're the reporter from Her Vision Studio, she replied without looking at the card. The man was slightly surprised, but only for a moment before a smile once again appeared on his face. I never expected to see you here, he said. I assume you must be headed to the fashion show in London? She nodded politely. The boyfriend from last time didn't come with you, he said, looking around. He didn't see anyone suspicious, so he let Emma off the hook. I guess I'll see you in London. What was that all about? Richard asked after he left. What did he mean by the boyfriend from last time? Last time, when Kaleidoscope got in trouble, I went overseas with Eric and was seen stepping out of his car, she explained. But we had no idea the man was Eric. I'm afraid the coming week in London won't be very fun. There are going to be eyes following me everywhere. What are you afraid of? Eric didn't come along this time, Richard said. He was more afraid that Charlotte would have something up her sleeve for them. Of course, Emma couldn't have known that this reporter would end up clinging to her for days to come. Is Emma already on her way to London? Charlotte asked Lucas as she paced back and forth across her office. She should be on the plane right now, he replied. You've already made arrangements in London. This time, I hired some famous paparazzi from South Korea, he said, twirling his fingers. If Emma does anything suspicious at all, she won't be able to avoid the camera. His expression was calm, with a trace of arrogance. He was the very definition of the word pretentious. Give them everything they need until we have what we want, she yelled impulsively. Then she sat down in her chair and said, we need to find a few newcomers to train. I just don't feel confident with just Hillary. After a 10-hour flight, Emma and her crew finally arrived in London around midday. Before getting into her car, Emma shot a quick glance at the reporter from her vision. He was acting very strange. He wasn't being clingy, but he still made her feel like she was in danger. Emma reminded herself to be wary of him as she threw his business card into the trash. Ten minutes after she left the airport, she received a phone call from Eric. After telling him she'd made it safely, she and Richard made their way to the hotel H-World had arranged for them. The JK show is in two days, Richard said. We need to go for a quick interview before then. Even though H-World recommended you, it hasn't been confirmed yet. You organize it then, Emma replied. What are your thoughts on Charlotte arranging this job for you as an act of forgiveness? He asked. This was something he'd wanted to know for a long time. Episode 184 Trouble in London JK is a high-class fashion label, Emma replied with a gentle smile. Why would I reject it? The only issue is that if she's giving me such a great job, she must want something from me in return. I'll take precautionary action, Richard said. Go get some rest and adjust to the time difference. You have a lot of work to do. After Richard left, Emma lay on the bed and shut her eyes. She knew she should be tired, but instead she felt she was becoming more and more awake. She couldn't help thinking about the international runway show she was about to perform in. This would be much different than all the small shows she had done in the past. If she managed to steal the show, it would open her up to a lot more international opportunities. It seemed that this was the final step she had to take before she could be on the same level as Eric. Maybe it was because the couple's minds were in sync. But she suddenly received a phone call from Eric. She picked up the phone and giggled. How did you know I was thinking about you? She asked. Back in New York, it was still mid-morning. After waking up and not seeing the figure he had become so used to lying next to, 
Eric had started thinking about her. Emma had never been a noisy person, but without her around, the house felt empty. It is really hard to adjust to, he thought. Mrs. Roberts, he said, if you're really going to be gone for a week, my body and mind are both going to suffer. I want to see you right now. I want to hug you and kiss you. Talk about suffering, she thought. I'm in a foreign country, lying in an unfamiliar bed. I'm suffering even more than he is. Unfortunately, Mr. Roberts, we have to be apart for now, she said. I guess you'll need to endure for a little bit. Endure, he thought. I don't plan on enduring anything. So, while he was coaxing Emma to sleep over the phone, he sent a message to Luke telling him to book the next flight to London. However, he would only be able to see Emma briefly before flying back for an important dinner party. After receiving the message, Luke thought about how Eric would be flying for a total of 20 hours just to get a quick look at her. Is this really necessary? He thought. Eric, wait for me, Emma mumbled as she drifted off to sleep. I'm almost there. I'm almost at your level. Eric's heart melted as he listened to her. Oh, what if I have to fly 20 hours, he thought. I told Emma long ago that if she wanted to go somewhere, I would accompany her. It'll be worth it, even if it's only for a brief moment. Two days later, Emma and Richard were arriving on the set of the J.K. show. The show was to take place in a beautiful church on the outskirts of London, and the theme was soul and rebirth. The clothes were all black and white, with details such as black mandalas and black and white wigs. It was like the two opposing forces of life were pulling at each other. Now that she was on the set of an international show, Emma no longer needed to worry about other models using dirty tactics to tear each other apart. Backstage, all that could be seen were models getting changed and applying makeup. Emma felt like she had become her 19-year-old self in France again. Richard was discussing things with the JK representative, while Emma tried on her clothes and makeup in a dressing room. At a high-class show like this, there were no other American models besides herself. That was because there weren't many American models who could do international shows to begin with. Emma stood in front of the full-body mirror. She was wearing only a black bra and underwear. This was normal for a model. All she had to do was stretch out her arms and people would start dressing her per the designer's instructions. J.K.'s designer was a bearded man in his 40s. He considered himself part New Yorker, and his whole body carried an artistic presence. He scanned Emma's body and noticed her legs. They were so beautiful, they were impossible to ignore. So he clicked his fingers loudly and told the assistant to bring the outfit he had prepared for the finale. He wanted Emma to try it on. It was a long black dress with a deep v-neck. The main body of the dress was made up of translucent black gauze, interwined with black mesh. The design was inspired by the idea of a trapped soul. The scattering of black mandela-patterned flowers ran from the shoulders all the way to the waist. The darkness, the wickedness, the struggle. As soon as Emma put on the dress, it looked like an evil power that had been trapped inside her was about to break free. That's the feeling I wanted, the designer explained. The feeling of evil struggling to break free. Excellent. You'll do the finale. She had originally come for the opening, yet now she was being given the finale. This was something Emma had never imagined. She was also surprised to learn that for the finale, she would be performing with a male model. In order to get the sequence right, all the models were required to do a practice run. It was only when Emma stepped on stage for the run-through that she saw her partner for the first time. He was a six-foot-two man in his early twenties. He was handsome, 
with a pair of ocean blue eyes and an extraordinary amount of charm and confidence. As Emma posed with her shoulder against his, he suddenly reached out his hand and pinched her thigh. She turned and gave him a cold glare as a warning. Sorry, but your legs are way too beautiful, he said. I'm so tempted to give them a kiss. If you do that, then you'll make me think this is how all British men are brought up to act, she warned. They moved apart and walked back down the runway. The model ignored Emma's warning and continued to smirk at her for the rest of the practice run. When they were done, Emma stepped off the stage and Richard immediately covered her with his jacket. What happened just now? He asked. What did that male model do? It's nothing, she said. She assumed he just had a moment of foolishness and decided to let him off the hook. In reality, at shows like this, it was normal for models to take advantage of each other by pushing and shoving others, or even touching them, especially backstage. All sorts of things could be seen back in the dressing room. Emma put the jacket on and started heading backstage with Richard. However, as she had a good eye for cameras, she spotted an abnormal flash coming from a hidden corner. It looks like someone is photographing me in secret, she said to Richard. He glanced at her and followed her gaze before patting her on the shoulder. Go backstage and get changed, he said. I'll handle this. Emma nodded her head. She had a vague idea of what was happening, so she stuck around for a little bit instead of heading straight backstage. She watched as Richard walked over to the hidden corner of the church. Suddenly, a shadow could be seen moving underneath one of the benches. Maybe because he was a professional who was good at escaping, but Richard did not manage to catch him. Forget about it, Emma said. There are plenty of people here with confidential design secrets he could be spying on. He may not be here for me. Maybe I'm being too paranoid. Richard returned to her side to escort her back. I'll pay extra attention from now on. Let's go get changed. They had no idea that this was one of the South Korean paparazzi Lucas had hired. After escaping from the church, the man held onto his camera, looking pleased. His luck had been good. He'd managed to capture Emma flirting with a male model. The image of her thigh being pinched was captured in high definition on his camera. A few minutes later, Lucas received an email with the paparazzi's photo attached. This is only the first day, Emma, he thought. By the time you return, thinking you've succeeded, you'll discover your name has been completely tarnished. Episode 185, A Legend. The rep from her vision was also present on set. He was waiting for his big break. Emma was well known for her low profile and pure nature. However, from the moment he saw her giving an affectionate goodbye to a man in Mexico, she had made a deep impression on him. He was in London because he believed that he would absolutely capture photo evidence of Emma and her man's intimate relationship. In regard to that paparazzi that had gotten chased out, he felt that furiously snapping photos was a waste of time. The thigh-touching material he'd gotten on camera was something that could only be used as cheap speculation. What he wanted was solid proof of Emma being affectionate with a man. Hence, he deliberately booked his hotel room right opposite hers. London in November wasn't as cold as it was in New York. A simple coat was enough to get by. On the way back to the hotel, Emma rested her eyes as Lisa gave her a massage. Lisa's heart ached for her as she needed her legs. As she had been wearing high-heeled shoes for a long period of time, the muscles in Emma's legs felt extremely tense. After entering the hotel's underground parking garage, Richard got out of the car first. He was shocked as his eyes fell upon a man in a black coat leaning against a car. It was Eric. Emma had fallen asleep. Lisa slowly got out of the car and turned to wake her up. 
But Eric gestured for her to remain silent as he leaned over and carried his wife out of the car. He tilted her head into his embrace. This hotel isn't very safe. I'll take her to a place I've organized. Richard nodded as he reminded him, Work will start at 7 tomorrow morning. Come pick her up before that time. I'll text you the address, Eric responded. He placed Emma into his sports car and swiftly drove off. Richard recalled Eric's words about the hotel not being safe and pictured the paparazzi from earlier. As a manager, he didn't want to let his imagination run wild, but he felt it was possible this had something to do with Charlotte. He thought back to the time he was in a relationship with Arnie and the shadows he had noticed lurking in the dark. They were memories that had once been sealed away. He really hoped that Arnie's death had nothing to do with Charlotte. Eric's car sped through the streets of London and eventually stopped outside a manor. As it was located on a private estate, the security was of the highest standard. He unlatched Emma's seatbelt and gazed down at her. This is the woman I miss so deeply, even when we're separated for just a single minute. They would only have two hours together, yet she had fallen asleep. However, Eric couldn't bear to wake her. He simply hugged her, wrapping his arms tightly around her. It seemed that being able to smell her unique fragrance was enough for him. She was exhausted from wearing high heels, walking from her long flight to the runway. Her legs suddenly started cramping up. The pain was so sharp that her eyes flew open and her head knocked into Eric's firm chest. She was stunned for a moment. She thought she was dreaming. He released her from his embrace and lifted her leg onto his knee. He then massaged her leg with his strong hand. Why are you here? she asked. Recharging myself, he replied. Emma happily stretched out her arms and hugged him. He was as much of a necessity to her as oxygen was. We only have two hours together. What would you like to do? he asked as he gently stroked her back. If you knew it was only for two hours, why did you still come? Emma hit his shoulder playfully. It's a 20-hour flight, and so far from home. As long as I get to hug you for two seconds, the 20 hours are worth it. So, you would even do things like this? She teased, turning her head and kissing him on his ear before making her way to his lips. However, Eric stayed still. I don't think this is enough. He didn't wait for her to move away from him before cupping his hands around her cheek and placing a fiery and passionate kiss on her lips. He didn't hold back at all. Emps didn't return to the hotel. This was the news the paparazzi relayed to Charlotte and Lucas. The pair were still at H-World late at night. They looked at each other before asking, Did you find out where she went? We were afraid of getting caught, so we didn't dare get too close. It was only when we discovered her room light hadn't been turned on that we got suspicious. Continue to keep an eye on her. As soon as you find any form of evidence, don't you dare let it go. Charlotte hung up the video chat and turned her head to face Lucas. What do you think Emma is doing right now? What else could she be doing? If she's not in her room, apart from fooling around with a man, what other reason would she have to be out? There's no point in talking about it. We need to get proof, she said. Thanks to the photo of Emma flirting with the male model they held in their hands, they had complete confidence in the South Korean paparazzi they had hired. At the same time, the reporter from her vision had also noticed that something was abnormal. Emma had not returned to the hotel. Richard and Lisa's rooms were both lit up. Only Emma's room was dark and still. He thought about the incident at the airport. Since there were so many hotels, he was better off waiting there. Maybe God will give me a pleasant surprise, he thought to himself. When the couple were working separately, 
Time seemed to drag on forever. However, when they were together, it passed by in the blink of an eye. Two hours were short and had been hard to come by. The pair didn't go anywhere. They simply remained in the car, kissing and hugging. They didn't want to waste a single second. The hotel booked by H-World has four paparazzi staying in it, Eric said. Before you return today, I already spoke to the manager, and he had a look at the surveillance cameras. Their movements completely masked yours. As H-World had organized the hotel, there was no way he could feel reassured. Therefore, the first thing he had done was check the safety of the hotel. Listening to his words, Emma quickly recalled the incident at the church earlier that day. I already asked Luke to look into these people. Don't be afraid. She gave a gentle laugh, shaking her head. I'm not afraid at all. I just want to know if these people are from the media or from Age World. I'm not even sure what Charlotte's motive could be. Eric gently stroked her hair without a word. He was gradually opening the doorway for her to join Kaleidoscope. No matter what her motive is, it can't be a good thing. You need to be careful. There's still some time before you have to get back to work. Get some rest in the manor. I'll bring you to the airport first, Emma offered. He held onto her shoulders and shook his head. Do you not see how tired you are? Listen to me. When I have time, I'll fly back. She didn't argue. She simply placed her forehead against his and enjoyed their last few moments of affection. In the end, Eric had arrived on his own and left on his own. Her vision's reporter stood guard at the airport and saw him arrive wearing sunglasses. However, he had no idea that Eric was the man he'd been waiting for. He simply sighed to himself. Kaleidoscope CEO was indeed a legend. Episode 186, Charlotte is Closing In. Luke's information came through. The paparazzi that were following Emma were from South Korea, and they were an extremely professional team. Luke also found out that they were in action because they had met with H-World's artist director, Lucas Perez. The answer was obvious. Richard was abnormally upset. He'd suddenly realized a lot of things. During the incident with Arnie, although it was exposed by Ariadne and Lucas, the substantive evidence came from the hidden flashes that followed them around. He wondered if that was Charlotte's doing. Now that Arnie's incident is well in the past, does Charlotte want to play the same trick again, he thought? She's already taken Arnie's life. Does she also want Emma's? I'm not sure what those people managed to capture, he said. Lisa couldn't help but sigh. I really liked Charlotte Garcia at one stage. I thought she was competent and strong, like a true heroine. Who would have imagined she'd turn out to be as cruel as a wolf? Emma sat on the hotel bed. She was immensely calm. No matter how merciless Charlotte was, it could never stop her determination to become an international supermodel. Although Charlotte was cruel, Emma could be even more so. Seeing her remain silent, Richard felt slightly terrified. After being around her for quite some time, he had developed a certain level of understanding towards her. Although she was quiet as usual, her mood could be deciphered through slight variations in her silence. When she was with Eric, her silence carried a relaxed and comfortable atmosphere with it. When she was with outsiders, her silence made her seem unapproachable. At that moment, it had reached a stage where one should be terrified. The more she didn't speak, the more it meant that she was thinking of a way to strike back at Charlotte. Charlotte had already pushed things too far. Emma's future would definitely not be at H-World. What do you plan to do? He asked her. What else can I do? I'm just going to let her take as many photos as she wants. 
Emma smiled slightly, as if she didn't care. However, Richard knew if Charlotte was a mantis, then Emma was a hawk. All you need to focus on right now is walking in the JK show to the best of your ability. Nothing else is as important as this. But I don't think Charlotte will let me appear on the runway. Right now, she's trying to decide between using me or destroying me. Emma's mind was clear as she lifted her head to look into Richard's eyes. If you were Charlotte, which would you choose? The thing is, I don't think she's gotten anything she can use against you, he responded. Not necessarily. Emma was referring to the incident with the male model. As long as Charlotte wanted to, she could use even such a small encounter to ruin her with careful planning. Just focus on preparing for the show. I'll handle everything else, Richard reassured her. She smiled. She trusted him, but not entirely. In this world, the only person she could trust completely was Eric. Emma, he didn't know you were in such a difficult situation, said Lisa. Do you think the reason Charlotte is stalking you is partly because she thinks Luke and I are just covering up for you, while you're the one who's actually related to Kaleidoscope? After hearing her question, Emma shook her head. No way. If Charlotte was suspicious of my relationship with Kaleidoscope, it wouldn't have been difficult for her to guess what my relationship with Eric is. From the start, she never expected that he would be interested in me at all. Why? Because Eric has no interest in her, said Emma. In her eyes, if he has no interest in her, then how could he possibly waste his time on a mere model like me? Deep inside, Charlotte was an extremely self-centered person. She never allowed others to be better than her, and she didn't let them out of her control. How arrogant! Although Lee felt a little better after hearing her words, she knew that Emma had worked hard to cover up her relationship with Eric and wasn't at the stage to reveal it just yet. After returning to her room, she decided to send a message to Luke. Why don't we live together? She felt she was out of her mind. Her face reddened as she lay on the bed. Luke was in the middle of dealing with some documents. Reading Lisa's message, she was shocked. He immediately replied to her with a whole heap of question marks. He'd actually assumed that Lisa had sent her message to the wrong person. Aren't we engaged, she said. Let's pretend to live together. You already have my keys after all. How about you drop by every now and then? Were you out of your mind? Lisa could think of no response to that. Having a low emotional intelligence is practically an illness, she thought. After Lisa and Richard returned to their respective rooms, Emma pulled open the curtains in her room and savored the view of London at night. Whatever way Charlotte decides to challenge me, I will throw it right back, she thought. But... What if she wants to take my life? The next morning, Emma was woken up by a knock on the door. She expected it to either be Lisa or Richard. However, after she got changed and opened the door, standing in front of her was the young male model from the previous day. I finally found you and your beautiful long legs. The man reached out his hands for a hug. Emma quickly dodged to the side. My name is Gabby. I really want to get to know you, my goddess. You are so sexy. Emma didn't bother to respond to him as she closed the door in his face and called Richard. At the time, for a man like this to appear in front of her, Emma couldn't help but link it back to the people at H-World. Richard easily sent the male model away before entering her room. You're currently being followed. For a creep like this to cling to you out of nowhere, it's definitely suspicious. Even Richard has noticed something is off. How could I not know? Charlotte is really closing in, she said. Lucas, who was even more sinister than Charlotte, knew deep down that Emma was not easy to deal with. If things were to continue to drag on, she would definitely retaliate sooner or later. Therefore... 
he didn't ask for Charlotte's permission before posting the photos in his possession directly online. The headline read, Emma's high moral mask torn off, taught flirting with a male model. At the same time, the article suggested that the writer was an insider. It hinted that he knew Emma had a boyfriend, but was flirting with a man with a dreamy back and seducing a male model overseas. Seeing that she was three-timing, he couldn't continue to stand idly by. Emma was famous for being reserved from the world. With this scandalous allegation, the netizens were quickly firing up and sharing their insults. Female celebrities were always treated differently to male celebrities. If a male celebrity had rumors like this, it would easily be overlooked. When it came to female celebrities, even if they were innocent, people would latch on and refuse to let go. On top of everything, the rumors could easily be turned into a scandal and be brought up time and time again. Everyone was caught by surprise. Lucas had played his move too quickly and too ruthlessly. As it was a sexual topic, which was particularly popular among men, the popularity of the article quickly flew to the top of the search rankings. At that moment, Eric's flight had just landed. Episode 187, Being Defamed. After seeing the article, Charlotte's face turned terrifyingly red. She grabbed onto the entertainment magazine and stomped her high-heeled shoes over to Lucas's office, throwing it down in front of him. Why did you make this decision on your own? Lucas put down the documents in his hands and stood up from his chair. Because we will only meet with them as counterattack if we continue to wait any longer. She's a careful schemer. The evidence we have in our hands is already enough to ruin her. Since that's the case, why should we continue to hold off? Charlotte didn't reply. In truth, she felt that Lucas's actions were the right thing to do. However, she didn't like people who made their own decisions without her consent. Emma was in London at the time. As long as H-World didn't do any PR and let the scandal continue to spread, all that would be waiting for her was the netizens' disgust and destruction. Don't forget that Emma was capable of pulling herself out of the last scandal, she reminded him. I definitely won't let her recover this time. I'm well prepared, he responded. He presented a whole stack of information for Charlotte to see. If Emma tries to retaliate, I'll just pull out another piece of evidence to get back at her, he thought. He didn't believe there would be anyone capable of saving her. Dear God! I never expected Emma to appear so distant from the world on the surface, yet be so wild deep down, people speculated. I already heard before that every time she goes overseas, she never stays in the hotel organized by her agency. Where could she have gone? She must have found someone to satisfy her. Didn't she say she didn't have a boyfriend? On the Talkmaster interview, I already felt that there was something going on between her and the man with the dreamy back. Was I the only one that felt like she was seducing a married man? I told you guys ages ago that there was something wrong with that slut. But so many of you claim that she was smarter than that. She's almost being crushed into pace. Isn't she just a model? Does it really make sense for her to hog the search rankings? I reckon that woman is currently lying in some foreign man's bed right now. In an instant. There were so many comments attacking Emma that the server almost crashed. As for the media company who had released the news, they had never seen an article being spread around so quickly. They were grinning from ear to ear. Let that slut stay in London and never come back, they thought. After the release of the scandal, media companies quickly contacted H-World to see if they were aware of Emma's current state. However, Lucas responded with a simple, I was not. On top of everything, H-World didn't do anything to resolve the matter. 
It suggested to the public that they had decided not to do any PR for Emma. She gave the impression that she had indeed done something wrong, leaving them with no choice but to give up on her. The media also contacted Richard. At the time, he was watching Emma practice her walk. He had no idea what they were talking about, so he ordered Lisa to do some research online. She looked extremely miserable as she handed the information over to Richard, her neck flushing red. He took the phone from her and had a quick glance before gesturing that he would take care of Emma. He also instructed her not to let Emma find out. Her main priority was JK's show. Lisa tried her best to hold back her anger in her heart as she looked at Richard and made an okay sign with her hand. Richard walked outside on his phone. As he stood in front of the church, he made a call. Charlotte, you sure are calculative. Emma's very unlucky. After struggling for so long, in the end, her name was tarnished by her own company. Charlotte responded, are you happy now that Emma's reputation is blackened like ash? Richard, even if I were to give up on Emma, there are still thousands of other Emmas. The only reason she ended up like this is because she asked for it, Charlotte retorted. If she knew how to behave and was a little more obedient without being so opinionated, she would have such a promising future. She wouldn't be only offered a show like JK's, but even better jobs, too. They would be all hers. At this point, can't blame anyone. Richard took a deep breath. He suddenly felt bad for Charlotte. Emma simply wanted to chase her dreams. She never wanted to hinder anyone. Sorry, Charlotte. She could sense there was a deeper meaning to his words. She gradually scrunched up her eyebrows. What do you mean? He hesitated for a moment before asking, Was Arnie pushed to her death in the same way? Hearing that name after so long, Charlotte was dumbfounded for a moment before scoffing. I'm sure you know better than I do how Arnie died. As for Emma, I just want to throw her into a place of no return. Richard felt he no longer had anything to say to her, so he hung up. However... This phone call hadn't resulted in nothing. He had recorded the entire conversation. Afterwards, he accepted phone calls from the New York media and told them, None of what you've heard is the truth. I hope the media can maintain their professional morals and not insult other people's innocence. After returning to New York, Eric had only just sat down inside his office at Kaleidoscope when he saw the viral scandal online. He immediately called Richard. Eric, don't worry. Emma doesn't know about it yet, and I intend on keeping it that way. I won't let it affect her appearance on JK's show, Richard told him. Also, I have a recording in my hands that proves that Charlotte has purposefully defamed her. Take good care of my wife, said Eric. Don't let her mood be affected. Also, send me the recording. At that moment, he was completely different to how he was in front of Emma. It was only then that Richard experienced the Eric that the public spoke of. He was an ultimate ruler with an unchallengeable power. I'll send it over now. Richard understood that keeping the recording in his own hands would never have the same impact as giving it to Eric. He quickly sent it over completely forgetting the part where he mentioned Arnie's death. Eric listened to the recording, cut out the part regarding Arnie, and gave it to Luke to handle. Upload this recording to the most popular sites online for one month with an eye-catching headline. Make sure not to let it come down from the top searches. The headline can be, Emma is being slandered because she offended you. One month? Luke was a little surprised. Does this mean H-World are just awaiting their destruction? He thought to himself. One month, Eric repeated. On top of that, get some media companies to extract specific phrases from the recording and get a team to spread them around. We should help Charlotte get some publicity.
Doesn't she want to experience ultimate power? I'll give it to her. He handed his phone over to Luke. Remember, if anyone tries to buy the top spots, then respond with double their offer. I want H-World's news to be up there for one month. Episode 188, Let Me Bow Down to You. Hey, have you guys seen the recording that's all over the internet? People ask. What gossip is it this time? What else could it be? It turns out that Emma was disgraced so badly yesterday because H-World CEO didn't like that she was being disobedient. Who <laughs> she thinks she is? Does she believe she's a god who can completely control others? So the tables have turned again. The netizens quickly opened the recording everyone was talking about. They heard the voices of Emma's manager, Richard, and H-World CEO, Charlotte. Many people were familiar with them, so their voices were easily identified. The content of the recording consisted of Richard asking Charlotte why she wasn't satisfied after already tarnishing Emma's reputation, and Charlotte arrogantly replying that it was because Emma wasn't obedient. Even when destroying her own agency's model, she didn't hold back at all. The netizens started discussing how the entertainment industry was like a deep pool of water. When seeking the truth, there was a lot to be found below the surface. It didn't take long for Emma to be acknowledged as the victim. At that moment, many people who had been in similar situations before left messages of their own experiences and showed their support. It's amazing for someone to have a lot of money. But when they use it to destroy other people's dreams and ruin lives, this is downright trash. Charlotte is just the tip of the iceberg. In all honesty, the entertainment industry is like an awful ditch full of garbage. Actually, what I want to say is that the person who uploaded this recording is really cool. The reason why Emma has been slandered like this is because she's been standing in too many people's way. She's too clean and distant from the world. However, the entertainment industry is all about sucking up to people and building relationships. Emma, if you continue being the way you are, you will continue to suffer. But I'll continue to support you. Emma, are you the one who got someone to keep the recording at the top of the search rankings? If you are, then please let me bow down to you. It hadn't even been one day, and the tables had turned completely. Onlookers had gradually gotten used to Emma's ability to deal with scandals. Therefore, they weren't surprised when the conditions were reversed. However, the content of the recording still got people talking. The day had just turned into night. Charlotte was sitting on her sofa at home glaring angrily at the headline that was sitting at the top of the online news. She pulled out her phone and gave Lucas a call. She instructed him to immediately deal with the situation, but he could only respond with, This is no use. Every time I make an offer, someone offers to pay double. Have you found out who it is? She stood up from the sofa and paced back and forth. The recording is definitely from Richard. But who's the powerful person behind them? Who has Richard contacted? I couldn't find anything. He could have done it on his own or with Emma. The other possibility is he may have found a partner in crime, Lucas replied. Didn't you say you had a surefire plan? Didn't you say you were going to destroy Emma? But who suffered in the end? Me, Charlotte yelled angrily. She was so emotional that she felt her stomach not up in pain as she knelt on the floor. Do you know how difficult things were for me when the board of directors heard the news? I was so tempted to dig a hole and bury myself in. Richard has been in the industry a long time. But even if he were to use the contacts he had, it wouldn't be as easy as it was for him in the past, Lucas responded. Still... It wouldn't be hard for him to find an enemy of yours to work with. Charlotte, you can no longer delay stripping him of his role as Emma's manager. 
They could never have imagined that the person playing with them like fiddles was Eric Roberts. It had always been him. Haven't you been planning to poach artists from another agency? Lucas continued. I think Richard would be better off doing that. We need to isolate Emma before we can think about moving forward. They had taken a blow, but they were still planning their next move. Charlotte lay on the sofa, breathing heavily. Your main priority is to find a way to take down the recordings. Afterwards, call Richard and tell him that we will be replacing Emma's manager. Understood. Lucas was thorough and calm. However, there were sometimes things that a simple director like him couldn't change, such as H-World's news. No matter how hard he tried, he couldn't make the other party even flinch. In London, J.K.'s show was about to start. For the past two days, Emma had been busy with rehearsals and meetings with their designer. She'd been so focused on holding on to these new resources that she'd not noticed her name flipping New York upside down. Even at that moment, the recording between Richard and Charlotte was still headlining all the popular news websites. As a result, H-World had suffered a huge blow, and their reputation was especially affected. And they didn't know who to blame. Whenever Emma had time, she would chat with Eric over the phone. However, not once did he mention the craziness that was happening back in New York. The paparazzi that Charlotte had hired ended up being dismissed as a result of the recording being exposed. This didn't mean that Emma was free from danger there was still the clingy Hervision reporter. Are you nervous? Take a deep breath. Just before the show was about to begin, Lisa fanned Emma as she checked on how she was feeling. Emma looked at the chaotic scene backstage and remained calm. Kim still in disbelief. This time, no one was trying to steal her show. No one was there to tear her apart. The stage was all hers. She could bring glory representing the models of America. Can you believe that Charlotte hasn't got something planned? Lisa grinned. Right now, she can't even take care of herself. How would she have time to deal with you? What do you mean? Lisa didn't respond, but smiled meaningfully. Of course, she also didn't tell her anything. In order to witness every one of Emma's beautiful angles during her most dazzling performance, someone had, once again, left behind all their work to fly all the way over to see her. That person was sitting in the audience. Seeing that Lisa wouldn't respond, Emma didn't ask further. She knew she would find out sooner or later. Richard is still on the phone outside. I'll go check on him. The show's about to start. Lisa said. She was worried that Emma would continue to question her, so she decided to find an excuse. However, at that moment, Richard was feeling angry and perplexed. It's the agency's decision for you to leave, Emma. As long as you're still a manager with each world, you will listen to the agency's instructions. On the other end of the phone, Lucas's voice was firm. Of course, you have the choice to leave H-World. Emma is still a company model, so we would naturally have to organize a new manager for her. We have no need for you anymore. Richard couldn't comprehend his words. Why don't you just put more effort into training newcomers? You're more than capable of producing a successful model. Just look at Hillary Turner. Why must you keep going against Emma? He couldn't believe that Charlotte was actually dismissing him from his role as Emma's manager. Episode 189, Embarrassed on the Runway. It's not that we want to go against Emma, said Lucas. She's the one who's going against us. The agency is one big team, but as a H-World model... When has she ever obeyed Charlotte's order? Richard, don't forget that there would be no you or Emma without H-World. Lucas's words were loud and clear, containing a note of pride and ridicule. Actually, Richard, let me correct myself. 
You already lost your right to be a top manager as soon as you betrayed Charlotte. Richard's lips curved upwards in mockery. His mood was a lot better than earlier. Lucas, whether I have the right or not is not up for you to decide. After all, the position of artist director was a role I rejected before Charlotte gave it to you. It seems that I know more about being a manager than you do. Plus, I think the first thing you need to learn is how to be a man, Lucas interrupted. Regarding my position, said Richard, as if Lucas hadn't spoken, there's no one who can replace me. With my qualifications and the amount of company secrets I know, even if Charlotte were to choose someone to get rid of, she may not necessarily choose me. As he finished speaking, Richard hung up the phone. He had no intention of following Charlotte's orders. However, Lisa had overheard the entire conversation. The show is started. Do you want to watch it? Of course. This is Emma's first appearance on an international runway. What's going on an international runway represent? Richard thought to himself. Well, just a simple look at all the email invites in Emma's inbox is enough to answer my own question. But this change had already taken place before she even appeared on the stage, simply because JK's commercial was featuring this fresh, mysterious new face. The thing that most viewers felt confident and excited for was the fact that Emma had ignited the Asian trend in North America, which was still going strong in the fashion world. Richard and Lisa glanced at each other before turning around to head back inside to the church. Just then, they noticed an American man and woman squatting on the steps, smoking. This normally wouldn't have been something to take notice of, but Richard caught Emma's name being mentioned. How much money did you get from them? Those people were quite generous. I only told Gabby half the actual amount, and he quickly agreed to give that model a push on the runway today. Gabby! Richard remembered that this was the name of the male model that would be walking the runway with Emma. They want to push Emma on the runway, he thought. A worried expression crossed his face. If Emma were to fall on the runway, her international career would possibly be over. Why is this male model willing to accept money to ruin Emma? It was due to the current culture in the modeling industry. Male models were treated differently from female models. Male models were mostly employed part-time, and not many of them achieved a high status in the industry. Additionally, their attendance fees were minuscule compared to female models, particularly the male models that didn't really stand out, such as Gabby. Since he had been offered money, there was no way he could reject it. Richard, what are you in a daze about? Lisa asked. He was silent for a moment before asking, Is Mr. Roberts here? He's in the audience. Why? Lisa watched curiously as he strode toward the audience. Eric was dressed in a dark blue suit, sitting in a corner amongst the audience. Due to his attractive charisma and noble presence, although he was sitting with some very important people in the fashion industry, he still emanated an aura that could not be ignored. Richard spotted the calm man, and he knew he'd laid eyes on Emma's ultimate support. He quickly walked over and leaned down to whisper a few words in his ear. Eric's gaze was originally cold and unapproachable, but after hearing Richard's words, his eyes sharpened like an eagle's. Decide on an amount and negotiate with the man. I don't care how much it costs, he instructed coldly. As for payback, we'll deal with it after the show is over. Richard understood his intentions. At that moment, money was the only foolproof solution. Even if we give a price now, will we make it in time? Gabby was Charlotte's backup plan. Although the paparazzi had achieved nothing, she wasn't going to let Emma get what she wanted. Just because I gave you the international runway, do you really think I'm actually supporting you? Charlotte thought, as if speaking to Emma. She gazed at the delicately designed watch on her wrist with a look of 
Scorn. She wanted Emma to know that if she could push her to the top, she could also pull her back down whenever she wanted. Let's wait and see how our model embarrasses herself in front of the whole world on JK's runway, right in the middle of London Fashion Week. Time slowly ticks by. Eric normally didn't care about incidents on stage. However, because Emma was involved, he was slightly worried. No one noticed him touching the mole on his ear, which was a sign that he was nervous. JK's show had officially begun. Accompanied by soothing classical music, the two opening models appeared on the runway, one from the left and one from the right. A while later, Richard finally returned to Eric's side. He slightly lowered his head, gesturing that the problem had been solved. Even so, Eric could not put complete trust in the man. Have you warned Emma? he asked. I'm not sure if Lisa found her. Eric fell silent without another word. He'd already done what he could do. If he wasted any more energy trying to get backstage, it could have a negative impact on his wife. I have faith that, even if she's faced with a problem, she'll know how to deal with it, said Richard. After all, she's been wary of Gabby all along. Eric couldn't focus on any words he was hearing, nor anything he was seeing. This wife of mine is someone I can never stop worrying about, it seems. He really had to bring her into the arms of his own company for him to be truly reassured. After JK's show, Emma would be able to advance toward becoming an international model. He believed that, judging by her talent, it wouldn't take her long to become a supermodel. Emma's finale is the 23rd sequence. Richard gazed at the entrance to the church and listened to the snaps of the camera shutters. He suddenly realized how anxious he was. He couldn't believe that even he would experience something that could make him break out in a cold sweat. My little Emma, he thought, stay strong. You've already pulled through so many obstacles. Do not fall on the international runway. It's not that I'm afraid you'll embarrass me. I'm just worried about how long it would take for you to regain your confidence and courage. A moment later, a loud applause echoed throughout the church, accompanied by shrill screams of excitement. Eric and Richard both lifted their heads to see that Emma and Gabby had made an appearance. Emma was wearing a black v-neck dress with a black mandela on the shoulder. She radiated a dark and sensual aura. Beautiful, Eric thought. She is too beautiful. Her beauty immediately fell onto the eyes of everyone in the room and left a deep impression on them. She was unforgettable. She completely overshadowed everything around her. But Eric and Richard watched nervously as she walked out, especially as the male model approached her side. Episode 190, Runway Queen. Who is this American model? She has the prettiest legs I've ever seen. Oh my God. She looks like an angel, stunning and beautiful. Em stepped onto the stage with complete confidence amid the crowd's cheers and compliments. It was clear that she was born for the runway. She shined on stage in the designer's clothes. The church erupted in applause as the audience stood with their hands in the air. Eric and Richard's worries were unfounded, as the only one walking awkwardly down the runway was the male model, Gabby. Em glanced down at Eric briefly, eyes shining with understanding and pleasure at his silent support, despite his worries. She smiled provocatively at the audience, a wicked twist to her lips as she embodied the devilish design. Afterwards, Eric and Richard clenched their fists nervously as Emma and Gabby swapped positions. But it looked like Gabby had no intention of doing anything. He simply turned and walked back down the runway.
Emmy's image remained in everyone's minds long after she had disappeared backstage. They were filled with visions of her face, presence, and beautifully long legs, and they all wanted to see her again. Several fashion industry heads in attendance were awed and just knew that Emma would be a household name around the world. At the end of the show, the designer walked out holding Emma's hand. Everyone stood and gave her a standing ovation. Emma's eyes found Eric's in the back row, and she smiled at him lovingly. I'm so proud of you, Eric mouthed to her. She held back her tears and smiled as she restrained herself from leaving the stage and pouncing on him in a hug. Charlotte was still waiting for Emma to be ridiculed in the news. However, the news clip she received raved over her stunning runway performance, including a picture of her being treated like a queen. The quoted industry head saying that she was the purest soul on the runway. A few minutes later, Charlotte called Gabby's manager and asked him why they didn't follow through with their plans. We told you we couldn't guarantee anything, the man responded. Fuck you, Charlotte yelled in anger before draining her glass of red wine. Angrily, she thought to herself, every time I try to destroy her, she somehow manages to get more popular. Now all the industry heads are looking at her thanks to JK's show. Soon, she'll be the most famous model in the world. And here I am, getting attacked day and night online thanks to that blasted headline. Emmy removed her makeup and accepted a few interviews before leaving the church with Richard. Eric's car was parked nearby. As soon as he saw her step out, he picked her up and drove her to the manor. Her visions reporter, Kyle, trailed in his car, but he couldn't take a photo of them thanks to the car's tinted windows. He followed them until they entered the private estate, where he was turned away at the gate. He reluctantly stopped the car and found a hidden spot to wait and see if he would have a stroke of luck. Eric led Emma into the manor and up the stairs to the second floor, where he pushed open the bedroom door and pressed her against the wall, claiming her lips. I've been trying to hold back the urge to hug and kiss you all night, Eric said as he removed his suit jacket and threw it to the floor. Emma leaned against the wall and hooked her arms around his neck. She wanted him by her side, always, and wished she could kiss him whenever she wanted. Their lips met again, and they breathed into each other's breaths as their passion rose. A moment later... A tearing sound echoed through the room as Eric ripped her clothes off her. Taking the initiative, she pushed him onto the bed and straddled his body as he helped her to tear off his clothes as well. Their bodies intertwined as they kissed and touched passionately, losing control as they gave in to their feelings of intense pleasure. A while later, Eric hugged her to him examining her body to make sure he didn't leave any visible marks. While she laid her head on his chest, he closed his eyes and relaxed, basking in the echoes of pleasure running through him. Tired? he asked her. Not as tired as you are, she replied slyly. He laughed quietly and stroked her hair before getting up and guiding her into the bathroom to wash up. She lay against his chest in the bathtub and relaxed, enjoying the closeness. Did Lisa find you? he asked. She was quiet for a moment before she said, Yes, but I wouldn't have gone easy on Gabby, even if you hadn't warned me. I had her mess with his shoes and distract him so he couldn't play whatever tricks he had planned on the runway. And that's why you look so awkward on this stage, he thought to himself. I think he was more worried about tripping on stage than pushing me off of it, she continued. He smiled as he kissed her on the forehead. There's one thing I haven't told you yet, 
he said. Charlotte is planning on firing Richard as your manager. Episode 191, Disappearing Act. Emma sat up and looked at Eric. What? When did this happen? Lisa told me she heard Richard talking to someone at H-World on the phone, just before the show. He stepped out of the water and wrapped himself in a bathrobe before helping her out of the tub. She walked over to the bed and sat as a sense of disappointment ran through her. She hadn't known Richard that long, but he'd put his heart and soul into helping her. And aside from Eric, she couldn't picture anyone else as her manager. He'd become a friend, and she hated to see her friend suffer. What's on your mind? Eric asked her. He may not be my manager anymore, but he doesn't deserve to be treated like this by Charlotte. She'll use any excuse to bully someone. Plus, do you really think she'd let him go so easily? If she's removing him, then she has a plan. And I don't want him reduced to nothing again if he leaves H-World. He's helped me, so now it's my turn to help him, she said vehemently. To herself, she thought, of course, if she's already told him that he's being replaced, then I'll probably lose him as a manager no matter what I do, and I have a feeling Richard knows that too. At the Orchid Hotel, Richard had separated all the new invites, current contracts, and completed jobs before briefing Lisa on everything. He also told her about Emma's current status and the contract she should avoid and use. Lisa lay on the sofa and listened reluctantly. He had already planned out a course for Emma, and as long as they followed his plan, she would be a supermodel in less than a month, on par with those at Star King. Are you listening? I've thrown a lot of information at you, he said as he tapped her on the forehead. She lifted her head and looked into his eyes. She'd never realized how pretty his eyes were. They twinkled like stars. Do you have to go? she asked. Lucas said a lot of bullshit, but he was right about one thing. I'm an employee of H-World, so I don't have a choice but to do whatever Charlotte tells me to do, he replied with a helpless and broken-hearted expression. Emma was the first person he'd come across who made him passionate about his job since Arnie died. He'd had every intention of staying with her till the end, but thanks to Charlotte, that wasn't going to happen. Have you told Emma that you're leaving? Lisa asked. No, the new manager is already on his way. Once I finish briefing you on everything, I'll have to head back to New York. Lisa took a deep breath as she tugged on the tassel hanging from the sofa. She hated Charlotte and her disgusting methods. Are you sure you can't stay? She begged again. There was no way she could do half as good a job at managing Emma as he did. He dealt with contracts efficiently and handled all sorts of dinners, auditions, and languages without a problem. Most importantly, he was a good person. He didn't know whether to laugh or cry as he said, Take good care of Emma for me. You know Charlotte will come up with a way to deal with you for everything you've done as soon as you go back to H-World, she warned him. I'm not afraid of her. He stood up and grabbed his jacket and luggage as he continued. If you don't think you can handle this, feel free to hand the reins over to Eric. She really wanted to stop him, but she didn't know how. As soon as he left, she called Emma. Hello, Lisa, she answered sleepily. Emma, Richard's gone. He headed to the airport now to return to New York, Lisa said anxiously. Emma sat up in bed, wide awake, and hung up before calling Richard, but he didn't answer. Emma had no choice but to text him. I can't stop you from going back to New York, 
but I won't hesitate to retaliate if I find out Charlotte is trying to humiliate you again. No one has the right to hurt you. Richard laughed quietly as he read her message. Having her for a friend made everything worth it. He was going to miss being her manager. Emma's movements woke Eric up. He sat up and noticed she was staring off into space, clearly in a bad mood. So he got up and got her a glass of water. Eric, Richard's gone. I can't stand watching a friend suffer, she told him. He sat cross-legged on the bed and held her as he tried to comfort her. It's not like you'll never see him again. I know that Charlotte won't stop at just firing him, she said, leaning into him. He held onto her shoulders and said gently, He knows what he's doing. Even if she tries to make things difficult for him, he has other skills besides managing models. He studied as a director years ago and received several awards. Did you really think he didn't have other options? I just hate how she's always trying to hurt and destroy people, she said. We won't let that happen, he said fiercely. She nodded, knowing that Charlotte would be the one to suffer if she dared do anything to Richard. I know, but it still leaves me without a manager. My popularity is skyrocketing after yesterday's show, which means more money and more jobs. And I don't trust anyone that Charlotte set up for me. We both know they'll be trash and loyal only to her. The entire company was whispering and pointing at him when Richard returned to H-World the next day. He knew it was because of the recording between him and Charlotte that was still the top news headline. When he walked into Charlotte's office, she turned in her chair, stood up, and slapped him. Do you have any idea what you've put me and this company through? She asked sharply. He didn't respond or try to fight back. He held back all the feelings of anger, hate, and betrayal he felt toward her as she ranted at him. I don't care how you do it, but I want you to explain to everyone what was going on with that recording, or you won't like what I do in return. She snarled. What will you do? He asked, curious how far she was willing to go. It's your fault that the company is suffering a loss and facing possible bankruptcy, she said. Either explain and get us out of this mess, or I'll tell everyone about the sugar daddy Arnie had before her death. Episode 192 Loyalty Returned Richard's eyes widened and his face grew red in anger. He grabbed Charlotte and said through gritted teeth, You've gone too far. Would you really malign someone who's dead and can't defend themselves? I don't even care about the living. What makes you think I care about the dead? She said, laughing lightly as she gazed at him with dewy eyes. Richard, we've been friends for years. How could you help Emma? She can't do half the things I can for you. Is she really worth giving up our friendship? He loosened his grip as he sneered. Friendship? You have no idea what it means to be a friend. Emma may not be able to give me fame and fortune, but she did give me loyalty, kindness, and true friendship. She never once tried to threaten or blackmail me like you have. You make me sick. Charlotte's heart pagged as she said, I'm in a difficult position. You have no idea what that's like. Emma has it harder, dealing with an evil boss like you. Charlotte remained quiet as he continued. I'll gladly hand in my resignation, but I'm not vouching for your innocence regarding that recording. If you don't, then I'll tarnish Arnie's name. You'll only have yourself to blame when his name gets dragged through the mud, she said. He glared at her. 
It took everything he had to refrain from lashing out and slapping her back. Clenching his jaw, he said, Fine, I'll help you. What do you want me to do? I want you to hold a press conference and tell everyone you fabricated the recording by piecing words together, she said before turning her back on him. She wanted him to lose all the standing and respect he'd gained since coming back to H-World and working with Emma. I'd rather take the blame than let her ruin Arnie's name or try anything else with Emma, he thought to himself, resigned. He sighed. Fine. As he turned to leave, he added, You'll regret this. She didn't turn around or react in any way to his words, except to snort in contempt. As long as Arnie's reputation is on the line, he'll do whatever I want without question, she thought. Richard left her office and headed to Arnie's grave, where he sat quietly. I wish you'd taken me with you, Arnie. It was nighttime in London, and Emma still hadn't gotten a response from Richard making her anxious. There wasn't much she could get Luke to do in regards to H-World, and besides, Kaleidoscope had enough on their plate. Thanks to Richard's absence, Lisa was busier than usual. She had trouble with the different languages and didn't understand a lot of the professional terms. Emma, can you help me? she asked. Let me have a look. Emma said, grabbing the laptop and looking over the notes Richard had written. This is a void contract. We've already rejected it. Uh, I wish I knew that earlier. I spent the last few hours going over it. Eric came out of the study once he finished dealing with a few things for Kaleidoscope. He took one look at the stressed expression on the two women's faces and took the laptop from Emma's hand. This was exactly what she hadn't wanted him to do, but they needed help. After looking through her emails, he prioritized all the emails related to the jobs she would be taking on next. Thanks to the success of JK's show, she would be staying in London a little while longer. She'd received quite a few runway offers from some big-name brands. Eric... I want to go back to New York for a couple of days, she told him. He knew she was worried about her friend, and until she was satisfied with Richard's current situation, she would never be able to focus on work. He nodded and said, I'll get someone to organize your flights and postpone your job. She nodded her head in thanks as a rush of emotion swept through her. She appreciated that he always stood by her side and supported her, no matter what. Lisa's phone rang, and she looked down to see it was the new manager Charlotte had arranged. Reluctantly, she picked up the phone. The manager exploded in anger the minute she picked up. Where are you, you incompetent assistant? Why isn't Emma at the hotel room arranged by the agency? It's the middle of the night. Lisa opened her mouth to respond, but nothing came out. She just stared blankly at Emma. Hello, are you deaf? Answer me! He raged. Emma suddenly grabbed the phone from Lisa's hand and said, You're fired. What? Dare you fire me? Who do you think you are? I'm Emma Miller, she responded angrily. The manager panicked. He thought he'd been speaking to Lisa and didn't realize Emma had taken the phone. His attitude changed as he attempted to speak in a flattering tone. I'm sorry, Emma. I got worried when I couldn't find you guys. I'm sorry, too. You've insulted my assistant. I refuse to work with you. You can tell Charlotte exactly what happened if she asks. And you can also tell her that a pretty package doesn't hide the trash underneath. She hung up the phone and handed it back to Lisa. Later that night, the three of them headed to the airport. Thanks to her increased popularity from JK's show, she had to be extra discreet. 
Kyle didn't capture a single clear photo as their car sped out of the estate. He couldn't even get a shot at the back of the car. After they boarded the plane, Emma found out about the article Lucas had released about her allegedly flirting with a male model a few days ago. Everyone had kept it secret from her, and Eric had spent a ton of money to make sure the Charlotte story remained at the top of the search bar. Eric, you didn't have to do that, she said, looking over at him. I couldn't just stand by and watch him try to humiliate you, he responded as he wrapped his arms around her. She was speechless and simply intertwined her fingers with his, gently placing a kiss on the back of his hand. After an almost ten-hour flight, they exited the airport discreetly and headed for the pickup area where Luke was waiting for them. A news clip flashed across the airport screen. Richard from H-World Entertainment was going to hold a press conference. Emma was sure Charlotte planned on throwing the blame for the recording onto Richard. However, Charlotte had no idea Emma was back and had no intention of letting that happen. Episode 193, A Change in Perspective if Richard admitted to creating a fake recording, Emma's innocence would be revoked and her scandal would ignite once again. Everything he had done to protect her would also backfire, because it would be like he had something to hide, like her alleged relationships with multiple men. Charlotte was putting him in an extremely difficult situation. He didn't care what happened to him, but he didn't want Arnie or Emma hurt. After discreetly returning to New York, Emma contacted the friends she thought might be able to lend a hand while Eric went back to his place. She wasn't afraid of starting a battle with Charlotte. She just wanted to make sure Richard would escape unscathed. Emma... You're worrying yourself too much. Richard has his own way of dealing with things. I'm sure he won't stand idly by while Charlotte threatens him, Lisa said, trying to comfort her on their way to H-World. Going to H-World won't change anything. I'm not going there to talk to Charlotte, Emma replied. I'm going there to wait for Richard, unless you have a better way to get in contact with him. Lisa shook her head. Richard wasn't answering any of their calls. Since the press conference was being held at H-World, he would definitely be there ahead of time. Lisa, get someone to find out where Arnie is buried, she instructed as she suddenly thought of the only other place he would most likely be. Lisa nodded. This was one job she was good at. A few minutes later, she told Luke, who was driving where the gravesite was and asked him to drive there. After Luke picked them up from the airport, Eric had told him to drive Lisa and Emma wherever they needed to go while they were in New York. Lisa and Luke were a bit awkward when they first saw each other, as this was the first time they'd been around each other since Lisa suggested they live together. Luke may not have understood her reasoning, but he was still playing the part of her fiancé, and her heart fluttered a little as he drove them around. Luke and Lisa stayed in the car while Emma got out. She wrapped herself in a coat to ward against the foggy and overcast day as she entered the graveyard. As expected, she found Richard in front of Arnie's grave. Their eyes met. Richard was obviously shocked as he stood up and asked, what are you doing here? You still have a lot to do in London. If you know that, then why did you leave so abruptly? She replied, eyeing him before he placed a bunch of white roses on Arnie's grave. She clasped her hands and bowed her head slightly in respect as she studied the photo of the young woman on the tombstone. I take it you heard about the press conference this afternoon, he asked. Yep, she said nodding. I finally understand why Eric always asks me why I choose the hardest path every time. 
even when there's an easier solution. Because I want to ask you the same thing. Did you come back so you wouldn't be implicated, or what? He asked, dodging the question. Do you really think I'm afraid of Charlotte? Emma asked as she looked at him. I just don't want you to go through the same thing I have. Emma, have you ever experienced a moment of total despair? He asked, lowering his head as he touched the photo on the tombstone. Even though his lover had been gone for several years, the pain in his heart was still fresh. Of course. Three months ago, I discovered my fiancé was having an affair the night before our wedding. The next day, I met and married Eric at the courthouse, she replied. But if I hadn't met Eric, I still wouldn't have given up on love. Why would I let something like that stop me? I'm extremely grateful that I ended up meeting him. Everything we've gone through since has been completely worth it. Isn't it painful? he asked. Sometimes. But true pain is spending year after year missing someone while life goes on for everyone around you. Emma pulled a business card out of her purse and continued, I don't know if you need this, but I want to offer you a fresh start. No matter what you decide to do at the press conference this afternoon, you have my full support. Charlotte, on the other hand, if I get a chance, I will tear her apart for everything she's done to us. She turned around and left the graveyard, leaving him in peace as he thought about her words and her offer. He repeated her words in his head as a weight suddenly lifted off his shoulder. He smiled, lowered his head, and spoke to the photo on the tombstone. Arnie, she's right. I've kept myself locked away for too long. It's time for me to live my life on my own terms. It's time to focus on me and the people I care about who are still alive. A large number of reporters had already gathered in the conference room as they waited for the press conference to start. They were all eager to hear what Richard had to say about Charlotte and H-World's recent scandal. Charlotte stood to one side and chatted with Lucas as she watched the staff set up the stage. You need to be careful with Richard. Back when the three of us were still on good terms, he was always the type to deal with the situation quietly and discreetly so others wouldn't worry. He's clever and sneakier than you're giving him credit for, Lucas told her. Charlotte crossed her arms as she said, It doesn't matter how capable he is. Arnie has always been his weakness. There's nothing he wouldn't do for her, dead or alive. Do you really think he'll betray her for Emma? Lucas didn't share her confidence or faith. Her ego caused her to overlook a lot of things, including change. Nothing was forever. He kept quiet, though. He knew she wouldn't listen to him. Richard entered H-World, dressed in a gray suit, and headed over to Charlotte and Lucas. He reminded her, Don't forget what you promised me. She smiled as she said, I remember. I'll give you all the information I have. Richard turned his gaze to Lucas. Of the three of us, I thought I'd be the unhappy one. What's wrong with you? Lucas lifted his chin and replied, My beef is with Emma, not you. You can only blame yourself for choosing the wrong side. But if you have issues finding a job after this, come talk to me. Richard suddenly let out a laugh, startling Charlotte. It had been years since she'd seen such a carefree smile on his face. Maybe Lucas is right, and he has changed, she thought to herself as Richard walked off and stepped on the stage. Will he stick to his side of the bargain and take the blame for the recording, she wondered, as the press conference started. Episode 194, Pawn Take Queen Richard faced the reporters calmly as multiple camera shutters went off. The corners of his lips curved up in a small smile. 
The last time he stood in front of such a large audience was years ago, when Arnie became the international spokesperson for VL. The press conference started, and the reporters were given 15 minutes to ask questions, while H-World staff kept everything in order. Charles stepped up on the stage and looked around. We are here to discuss and clear up the recording fiasco that recently came out. We've gotten where we are today through hard work and dedication. Recently, one of our models was dragged through the mud, and now it's happening to me. I've kept my silence so far because I believe that justice will prevail. Richard stood by her side as Charlotte spoke. He really wanted to ask how she could be so shameless. Does she feel no shame at all? She's clearly trying to suggest that Emma is behind everything going on, he thought in disgust. Now, please welcome Richard Collins to the stage. I'm sure he will give everyone a satisfactory explanation, Charlotte said before stepping back. However, before she could retreat completely, one of the reporters suddenly asked, Charlotte! Are you trying to say that everything H-World has gone through lately is because of the new model you signed, Emma? They had seen right through her, through her true intentions. Everyone looked at the reporter and back at a stunned Charlotte as they wondered if she would deny it. If she started insulting a model she had personally signed, she would embarrass and malign herself. She simply smiled mysteriously instead of responding. Then she eyed Richard darkly, thinking, I'll finally get my revenge on Emma. By the time she hears about this in London, it'll be too late. The success from the JK show will mean nothing, and she'll be right back at the bottom. I don't care if the reporters know what I'm trying to do. It's no secret we've been fighting for weeks. One way or another, I'll ruin her career. Richard, Charlotte gestured for him to speak, a threatening tone underlying her words. Richard nodded before turning to face the reporters. Before I tell you about the recording that you've all heard about in the news, I want to talk about a slightly unrelated subject, he said, smiling at everyone. I've been in this industry for a long time and I've worked myself up from a mere assistant to one of the industry's top managers. I can't tell you how many times I've been on a stage just like this and been forced to tell you things that disgusted me. Before I tell everyone the truth, I want to talk about someone everyone's forgotten, but who was very important to me, Arnie. The reporters looked at each other. They didn't understand why he was suddenly mentioning Arnie, but no one was more uncomfortable than Charlotte. She started to get worried as he continued talking. I'm sure everyone's aware that Arnie died in a car accident. We had a huge argument that day while she was driving and ended up hitting a barrier. She died on sight, and I was seriously injured. H-World covered it up and I was naive enough to think they were doing it for my own good. But now, I know they only covered it up out of guilt. Richard, what do you think you're doing? Charlotte asked as she grabbed his arm. He laughed quietly, lowering his voice before saying, Didn't you want me to tell the truth? I'm just doing what you asked. He pulled his arm out of her grip and continued, they felt guilty because Arnie's death was their fault. Charlotte secretly stalked us as she tried to find evidence of our relationship, and my two so-called friends, Ariadne and Lucas, outed our relationship to the media. We were arguing about that when the car accident happened. The reporters were shocked. They'd never expected him to expose something that happened years ago. Charlotte immediately ordered Lucas to call security and remove him from the stage. But Richard continued to speak. Do you know why they did all that? Jealousy. Charlotte is jealous of her models and is constantly thinking of ways to control them and bring them down. Years ago, it was Arnie. 
And now, it's Emma. I'd almost forgotten about Charlotte's underhanded methods, but she reminded me who she really is. That recording is completely real, and the best evidence I can give you. I still have the original recording on my phone, Richard said. Lucas approached the stage with security. They were trying to remove him from the stage by any means necessary, even violence, and didn't care that they had a room full of reporters. The security team kicked and punched him, but he didn't go down easily, so Lucas called for more security. Charlotte calmly announced that the press conference was over, while security ganged up on Richard. While everyone nervously watched the scene before them, a tall figure appeared in the entrance to the conference room, someone who was supposed to be in London. Episode 195 Goodbye, H-World. Reporters began clamoring at Emma's entrance. Emma Miller? Is it Emma Miller? Why is she back? Oh, God, Emma's getting involved. Now we have a good show to watch. They furiously snapped photos of her. The moment things became interesting, she had suddenly returned. Despite how the model was known for keeping a low profile... She seemed to leave a path of destruction behind her, and the places she appeared always turned into battlefields. As soon as Charlotte noticed her approaching the stage, she turned toward Lucas and gestured for him to contain the situation before things became worse. H-World security promptly turned toward Emma. However, to everyone's surprise, she had brought along her own professional bodyguard. Security couldn't do anything except watch her walk to the stage. Not too long ago, everyone had been certain that these two women were on good terms, especially since Emma had praised Charlotte. Yet, in a short period, their relationship had turned not only sour, they had become enemies. How come you're back? Shouldn't you still be in London? Charlotte sneered. If I didn't come back... I would have been defamed until you destroyed my career. Emma removed her sunglasses and stared down at Charlotte. Whenever she faced women, Emma always found herself towering over them, and Charlotte wasn't the exception. Charlotte glared at Emma with hate-filled eyes. The scene playing out between them had slipped out of her control. She originally thought Emma would speak, giving her a chance to argue back. However, Emma simply had her bodyguard deal with the security around Richard before telling him, say what you want to say and do what you want to do. What are you? Charlotte eyed her with confusion and suspicion. I'm simply here to protect my friend, Emma said sincerely. Richard, you can speak about your grief and suffering. Once you let it all out, you can finally be free. Richard looked at Emma, the unpredictable woman before him. Back in the Brooklyn City Center, for Lisa's sake, she had been willing to risk her image by slapping Cheryl May and her manager. Now, for his sake, she had flown all the way from London to put up a safety wall in front of him. He felt a rush of confidence as he lifted his head and faced the reporter. Then he pulled out his phone and played the original recording. The recording is real. After this, I'll send it to be examined for authenticity. As for what I mentioned earlier, about Charlotte being envious of her models, I'm sure everyone already has a rough idea. Previously, in an attempt to control Emma, Charlotte ordered her to have dinner with Brad Riley the night before their shoot. Emma refused, resulting in the messy aftermath. Following that, Charlotte caused a series of incidents. All of Emma's jobs were given to Cheryl and Hillary. Fortunately, Emma's outstanding advertisement for LM managed to earn her back her well-deserved recognition. Then, in an attempt to prevent Emma from doing the interview with Talkmaster, 
Charlotte went as far as kidnapping the grandfather of Emma's assistant, Lisa. This required Emma to publicly ask for his return on the show. Finally, the stalking incident during JK's show. It's almost unbelievable that an agency CEO would actually hire a team to slander their own model. Richard shook his head in disappointment before continuing. Despite that, Charlotte did everything I just told you to Emma after she signed on with H-World. And as her manager, I was a first-hand witness to it all. As soon as he finished, the reporters were thrown into a frenzy. H-World Entertainment had never been involved in such an extraordinary scandal. No one thought their internal battle was so extreme and that so much drama boiled beneath the surface. Charlotte took a few steps back from the uncontrollable situation, as if she were being repulsed. Richard had plenty of evidence to support his allegations. She had no way of retaliating, nor preventing people from digging up the truth. I never thought Richard would be the one to expose everything, she bemoaned. Barely able to withhold her anger, she turned to him. Richard, don't you want to survive this industry? Do you have a death wish? Do you think I still care about staying? He shot back coldly. From the time you pushed Arnie to her death to the times you've schemed to hurt Emma, I vowed to myself, I'd make you pay someday, Charlotte. He scoffed in disdain. The industry? as if I'd still care about that. Bitter tears rolled down her cheeks from red eyes that glared at him. Throughout this, the reporters were still riled up and spewing their commentary. By God, if everything Richard said is the truth, then Charlotte and h -World Entertainment are dangerous. I know, right? Murder and kidnapping. As a second-tier modeling agency, I never thought H-World Entertainment would be so dirty. Now I realize how wrong I was. I don't know about Arnie's incident, but I've heard my fair share about Emma. Rumors have been circulating the industry about her being suppressed for quite some time. The only difference is that Emma isn't bullied as easily as Arnie. Charlotte heard all the ridicule and speculation coming from the reporters and hysterically yelled, None of it is true. Richard, you've said so much, but do you have any evidence? If you can't show any evidence, then you'll have to pay for how you slandered me today. She ranted, I see what you're trying to do here. Everything was planned by you and Emma to destroy me. Charlotte spectacle drew everyone's attention. Compared to Richard, she was clearly flailing to talk her way out of the scandal and try and frame them for everything. Charlotte, do you really want to see evidence? He looked at her from behind the bodyguard with an expression of ridicule and sadness. She choked, unexpectedly speechless, as her thoughts turned. If I demand evidence, no stone will be left unturned online. I can't come back from that. He was emboldened again by her silence. Do you know how much I wish that you had nothing to do with Artie's death and that you just lost your mind for a moment? But after seeing how hard you tried to defame Emma, I realized that I could no longer remain silent. Emma just wants to be a successful model. She's never had intentions of going against you. But you have endlessly tried to hurt her and the people around her. You even sacrificed me for your motive. So, I'm officially announcing my resignation from H-World Entertainment. Episode 196 what an awesome plot twist. Hearing that Richard wanted to leave, the reporters slowly started whispering amongst themselves. Richard wants to leave? One reporter exclaimed. 
Of course he wants to leave an agency like this. If he sticks around, he's just waiting to be destroyed. But if Richard leaves, what will happen to Emma? Someone asked. Emma is still H-World's model, another reporter answered. He couldn't be blamed for wanting to leave. After all, he had revealed all of H-World's secrets. Regardless of how truthful his claims were, H-World would suffer a loss. Every single incident mentioned was bound to leave a permanent stain on its name and be endlessly used until Charlotte's demise. Now that they had reached this point, it was impossible for him to continue working with her. Richard, do you really think someone else would want you after leaving H-World? Charlotte asked. Her sharp voice wavered as she spoke harsh and unpleasant words. You ignored the company's interests and exposed our secrets. How could you continue in this industry? No one will want you. No one! She shouted from behind the bodyguards. So what? He thought with a calmness he'd never experienced before. All the struggles and pain I've endured are finally in the past. He simply smiled as he responded to Charlotte. Since I've decided to leave H-World, I have no intention of continuing as a manager. In a firm but gentle voice, he told her, Charlotte, you spent your entire life trying to control others without succeeding. In the process, you've lost yourself instead. From the moment he announced his resignation, he'd already felt reborn. He faced the reporters one last time and looked at Emma, saying, To me, Emma is truly an amazing woman. She upholds her responsibility and maintains her individuality, even in such a glamorous industry. She couldn't possibly be the awful things that Charlotte and the paparazzi keep calling her. She enjoys walking on the runway because she believes it's her destiny. She originally wanted to use H-World as a platform for achieving her dream. But all she experienced was endless pain caused by Charlotte. Toward Charlotte, I really have no more words. He slowly shook his head in disappointment. I would like to ask everyone to no longer believe articles released by H-World about Emma. The reality is that H-World has hurt her more than they have helped her. Finally, Richard faced Emma and asked her what she was planning on doing. She laughed. As she said from the start, she was only there to help a friend. I need to return to London. Can you hurry up a little? The reporters laughed at her attitude toward the situation. She truly appeared to be someone who didn't like trouble. She seemed like she was honest and kept her promises. At a time like this, she had no intention of striking back against Charlotte, making her tolerance admirable. Even with the ongoing battle, she managed to keep herself out of the situation. It was obvious that she wanted to fade into the background, because her main priority was helping Richard rediscover himself. As for what Charlotte owed her, she would deal with it later. Richard, you can't leave. You'll be breaching your contract, said Charlotte. Don't forget, you'll need to compensate triple the amount if you leave now. Her conceited attitude made her believe that Richard's name would be completely tarnished and that he wouldn't be able to survive in the industry after leaving H-World. Perhaps he had lost his opportunity to be a manager ever again, but that didn't mean his life was destroyed. He didn't get a chance to respond before four men dressed in stylish black suits entered H-World's main hall. From the looks of it, they were bodyguards. Afterward, a slightly chubby, middle-aged man approached Charlotte with the bodyguards and smiled. Actually, Miss Garcia, I really need to thank you. As my most capable student, I've long wanted to send Mr. Collins to pursue a career in California. He's got a natural talent for film, so I'm planning to send him to become a director. He has a promising future in Hollywood. The man sniffed with disdain. 
Just for your modeling agency. You can continue having fun with it on your own. So that was Richard's plan, Emma thought, and finally breathed out a sigh of relief. Do you guys recognize this man? One of the reporters had a good eye and had immediately recognized the middle-aged man in front of them, exclaiming, He's the famous director, William Rose. Who would have imagined? Not only has Richard been a great manager, but he has other talents as well, one reporter stated with a glint in her eye. Another reporter narrated dufully to the camera. Has H-World embarrassed themselves too badly this time? Here, Charlotte was thinking Richard would be in the streets after leaving H-World. Meanwhile, he'd already been scouted by a famous director. Just like that, Richard has been snatched from right under her nose. What an amazing plot twist. I really hope a better agency snatches Emma away too. At Kaleidoscope Entertainment, Eric was sitting in his office watching the news. Seeing Emma act as a human barrier for someone, he couldn't help but give a small grin. The internet was already in an uproar as fans started leaving comments on her fan pages, telling her to quickly find another agency. After all, as many comments voiced, she couldn't keep working at H-World. However, she felt this was the best time to work with him, because from now on, Charlotte's every move would be under public scrutiny, preventing her from holding Emma back. He understood what she was thinking, but it didn't stop him from hoping for something else. Nevertheless, just because she didn't leave with Richard didn't mean she didn't have other plans. By the time one of the reporters blurted out that they wanted her to go to a better agency, Eric was already planning something. Of course, he didn't forget to be happy for Richard. Although he could no longer be a manager, he believed Richard would be able to have a fresh start in a new city. They may even have a chance to work together in the future. Once again, the important mission of looking through Emma's contracts was returned to his hands. She'd always worried that he would grow tired of it, but from then on, it would be the norm. H-World's main hall was a complete mess, especially when Emma and Richard started to leave. Lucas watched as the two headed for the exit in front of the reporters. In his eyes, they were rubbing salt in Charlotte's wounds as they left the room. Can they really leave just because they want to? He thought bitterly. When were things ever that easy? Everyone had neglected him as he stood to the side. However, out of everyone in H-World, Lucas was the one they should have been the most afraid of. Episode 197, Nothing But The Best Emma, although I can no longer be your manager, I'll forever remember the time that I spent with you. I feel very happy and lucky to have met you. When the time finally came for Richard to leave, he stuck out his hand and gestured for Emma to shake it. She gave a gentle laugh as she grabbed his hand. To be honest, you're truly an amazing manager. If not for Charlotte's scheming, I had no intention of letting you go. He let go of her hand. For a moment, he refused to believe what was happening. I also thought, at one point, that I'd be able to accompany you to the end. If not, I hoped at least to help you become a supermodel. However, it doesn't matter. Although I'm no longer your manager, there's someone else who is willing. I'm sure you're well aware that you have a devoted husband at home. And I'm also a devoted wife, okay? She refuted. I'll continue paying attention to you, he continued. If you have any difficulties, don't hesitate to give me a call. If one day you decide to leave modeling and become an actress, you can come look for me. Perhaps there really will be a day like that. She felt nothing was impossible. Well, I have to go now. Emma, 
I know you didn't express your thoughts today because you're waiting for Charlotte to turn around and beg you. You've said it before. You're going to make her kneel before you. However, don't forget about Lucas. Compared to Ariadne and Charlotte, he's better at hiding his true intentions. She gave him a mysterious smile. She wasn't Charlotte, so she was well prepared for all possibilities and knew how to be cautious. Richard had nothing to worry about. Above all, she still had Eric backing her up. Hurry up and leave. I still need to go home and keep my devoted husband company. Richard's lips curved upward as he reached out his arms to embrace her. Finally, she and Lisa watched as he set off for a fresh start. In reality, he knew that even if Charlotte hadn't ruined things, he wouldn't have been able to accompany Emma on her path to becoming a supermodel. There was already someone much more willing to do that. And he believed someone as great as her deserved the best. Let's go, Emma. We should head back to the airport, Lisa reminded her. Her work in London wasn't complete, and she only had a couple days of leave. She couldn't let the photographers and other models continue to wait for her. I want to go see Eric. Do you miss him? Lisa winked. Emma didn't deny it as she nodded her head. Let's go. Lisa cheerily agreed as she turned the car toward Kaleidoscope Entertainment. Along the way, every radio station story was focused on H-World's press conference. The discussions endlessly circled around Emma, Charlotte, and Richard with one overarching opinion. Charlotte was in deep trouble this time. The press conference today helped us get some justice. If not for today, I wonder what other schemes Charlotte had planned for us. Emma contemplated Charlotte's crumbling image as they left H-World and couldn't help but sneer as the thought crossed her mind. A person like Charlotte would never admit to being wrong. She would simply think she had bad timing and luck. Who is Charlotte right now? Lisa barked a laugh. Didn't you hear? After we left, the reporters completely swamped her. She ended up being hit by one of the cameras and was sent to the hospital. In that case, are you still upset? Emma suddenly asked Lisa. At first, this question seemed like it came out of nowhere. But after a moment of silence, Lisa finally responded. She understood Emma was getting back at Charlotte for the humiliation she suffered at Brooklyn City Center. I've long given up being upset. Who do you think I am? Do you think irrelevant people like that would be worth me getting upset over? Emma lifted her head to look at her. She was aware that Lisa had always been optimistic, so she didn't say anything else. As long as Lisa was able to move on... She felt relief. Suddenly, Luke's injured knee came to her mind, so she made a suggestion to Lisa. In a moment, when we pass by the pharmacy, drop in and buy some medicine for Luke. I think he may have broken his kneecap trying to grab your passport. What? Lisa's shock and worry made her slam on the brakes. Emma glared at her until she quickly started driving again. In that case, I'll go to a nearby pharmacy. Emma remained silent as she gave Lisa a curious look. Lisa smiled awkwardly, realizing her reaction had been a little over the top. The relaxed atmosphere of the car was interrupted by a girl speaking on the radio. Excuse me, host. Could you please help me contact Emma? I need to find her. I have something urgent to tell her. Like the host, Emma assumed the girl must have been a fan. They quickly comforted her, saying, Sorry, miss, our program has no way of contacting Emma. But it's urgent. A life is on the line. She promised. The confused host, thinking she must be crazy, cut the line and warmed the atmosphere with jokes before taking on the next call. Emma didn't take the incident to heart. After all, she had plenty of fans with plenty of stories to tell. It wasn't always easy to differentiate between what was true and false. 
After a 40-minute car ride, she arrived downstairs at Kaleidoscope. Lisa followed her, anxiously clenching the medicine in her hand. Inside the elevator, Luke looked questioningly at Emma as she appeared from the secret walkway. Ma'am, why haven't you left yet? Isn't your flight at 4.30 this afternoon? Where's Eric? In the lounge. Luke rushed to hide the medication behind his back. Too late. Emma had already seen it. Is Eric sick? Emma's brow furrowed in concern. Actually, it's nothing serious, said Luke. He just has migraines sometimes. How come he's never mentioned it at home? And how come I've never seen him have migraines? He must not want you to know. You know what he's like. He couldn't bear for you to worry. Luke smiled before handing the tray in his hands to Emma. Here, I'll leave this with you. At that moment, Emma disregarded everything and rushed into the lounge. As for Lisa and Luke, who were left behind, they awkwardly looked at each other before she pretended to focus on a rainbow outside. She then shoved the medicine in her hands towards him. He looked at the package in confusion. What's this? Didn't you hurt your knee? Luke opened the bag and gazed at the medicine inside. Not only was there medicine for his injury, but there was also medicine for the flu, fever, headache, and even arthritis. I, uh, accidentally bought too much. Take it as a thank you for taking care of Emma. Who the hell thanks someone with a ton of medicine, he wondered. Inside the lounge, Eric laid atop a black bed. He lacked his usual king-like presence. He was simply a man clutching his head in pain. Eric, Emma ran to his side. Episode 198 Under His Wife's Spell Under the dim lighting, Eric heard a familiar voice. He held back the throbbing pain in his head as his expression softened and he turned to look at Emma. Shouldn't you be boarding your flight? He couldn't hear the difference in his own voice, but she could detect the strain of trying to endure his pain. She felt her throat burn and was afraid that she would cry if she spoke. So she put down the medicine and sat on the edge of the bed. She gently helped him up before pulling him into a tight embrace. Take some medicine first. He was in an anxiety-filled daze. He felt her tears on his shoulder, so he quickly tried to turn around. But again, she ordered, Take your medicine. He didn't resist and obediently took the medicine and water from her hands. She watched him swallow the medicine before gently taking his head into her hands and massaging it. She then placed a soft kiss on his head. He closed his eyes. At a time like this, he had no energy to explain himself. After roughly half an hour, the medicine finally kicked in and his mind began to clear. He pulled away from Emma's embrace to face her. Her eyes were still watery as she stared at him without a sound. It only hurts every now and then. It's not that serious. I did a medical examination not too long ago. I don't care. She lowered her head as a tear dropped onto his hand. All I know is that seeing you in pain makes me anxious. I didn't know what I could do for you. Emma wasn't someone who often cried. She faced most difficulties calmly. Only when it came to Eric did she react in such a way. He pulled her into his embrace and held onto her tightly as he comforted her with strokes on her back. Seeing you in pain makes me lose all reasoning, she admitted. Hearing these words, he suddenly realized something. Taking care of myself is part of taking care of her. Her tears did not merely fall upon his hand. They were like a hammer crashing down on his heart. 
He waited for her to calm down in his arms. A while later, he whispered in her ear, Later today, I'll tell Luke to arrange another examination at the hospital. She remained silent as she bit down on his neck. He was already used to her method of letting off steam. Whenever he made her emotions fluctuate, whether it was excitement or anger, she would use this method to respond to him. She bit onto his thin skin, unwilling to let go. But he let her bite as hard as she wanted and smiled as he hugged her tighter. It's okay. After taking the medicine, I feel a lot better. She finally released him with an aching heart. He looked at the alarm clock on the bedside table before offering to take her to the airport. Otherwise, you won't make it in time. She didn't want to get up, but he lifted her up in his arms. After tidying up a bit, he carried her out of the lounge. Inside the office, Lisa and Luke were still looking at each other awkwardly. Seeing Eric carrying Emma out, they quickly gathered around. What is it? What happened? Wasn't the boss unwell? How come Emma ended up being the delicate one? Lisa wondered incredulously. I'm taking you guys to the airport now. Lisa, take good care of Emma. Lisa didn't understand what was happening. She simply stood in place as she gave a grunt of agreement. They quickly got into the car. However, Emma remained silent the entire way. He could tell that she had not yet recovered from the earlier emotional turmoil. So, as the car stopped at a red light, he reached out his hand to stroke her hair. It didn't take long before they reached the airport. In order not to be discovered by the media, he stopped the car in a quiet spot and gestured for Lisa to comfort Emma. Lisa understood his look as she got out of the car and dragged her out. You still have two or three days of work in London. We can't delay it anymore. Emma didn't respond. Her expression remained dull. As she got out of the car, she couldn't bear to look at Eric in case she felt regret. However, after entering the airport, she suddenly turned to Lisa and said, I'm still worried about him. What should I do? Lisa was stunned for a moment before smiling. Emma, you know better than me when a person is indecisive and they don't choose what they feel is right. They will surely regret it. For example, if someone sees clouds as they leave the house and is undecided about whether to bring an umbrella, if they decide not to bring an umbrella, it will definitely rain. Or right now when you want to go back and chase after someone. If you don't turn around right now, you might miss out on the chance to be there for him when he needs you the most. Upon Lisa's words, Emma stepped out of the line without hesitation and immediately ran back to the spot where Eric dropped her off. Luckily, because of traffic congestion, Eric's car had not yet left the airport. She quickly ran over, pulled open the car door, and sat back in the passenger seat. Eric was stunned. Why are you back? Tell Luke to book an appointment right now. I won't leave until I see the results, Emma said firmly. This may be a small issue to you, but I can't leave the country worried about you. Do you understand? He brushed a hand across her cheek and gave it to her. He had already sent her this far, yet she still insisted on coming back. How could I bear to send her off again? So he immediately told Luke to contact the hospital and went to get an examination, accompanied by Emma. Finally, the doctor confirmed that there was nothing out of the ordinary. He had simply overworked himself so his brain naturally wanted to revolt. Do you finally feel relieved? He asked as he held onto her shoulders. 
It's really just a small issue. She felt a load had been lifted off her shoulders. However, with the memory of the pained look on his face, she couldn't resist ordering him to join her in London. While I work, I'll make sure you get some rest. He sighed. His heart ached, and he felt helpless around her. Okay. Hearing his boss concede, Luke was surprised. He never stops working, not for anyone. It looks like he's completely bewitched by his wife. After a moment, he told himself firmly, This is good, really good. Apparently, the only person in the world capable of making Eric obedient was Emma. In the end, she missed her flight. Eric had no choice but to arrange for a private flight. He couldn't let her delay any further. Inside the luxurious plane cabin, Luke and Lisa sat to one side. One of them was looking through documents, and the other looked through videos. Meanwhile, Eric lay in Emma's embrace, marking the first time he fell asleep in her arms. Episode 199, Old News, New Scheme Inside a quiet hospital room, Charlotte awoke to the sharp smell of disinfectant. After opening her eyes, she stared blankly at the ceiling. Lucas guarded her bedside. Upon seeing her wake, he quickly asked, Are you better? Do you still feel dizzy? How's H World? she asked with a raspy voice. He thought for a moment before answering her honestly. It's been severely affected. Even the police have been alerted but I've already told the legal team to cooperate with them. As for murder and kidnapping, the police can't find any evidence, so it shouldn't be an issue. However, a lot of our collaborations have been canceled, including advertisements and endorsements. Apart from Emma, even Hillary has received a cold reception. After hearing this, she flipped over turning her back to him as she closed her eyes and burst into tears. H-World is destroyed and destroyed to my own hand. He didn't know how to comfort her. All he could do was sit quietly by her side as she cried. After a fair bit of time had passed, he finally asked, Right now, there are reporters everywhere. The doctors asked how you're feeling and whether you'd like to go home to rest. Right now, is there any difference where I go? She retorted. He couldn't stand her defeated attitude, so he stood and grabbed her shirt. All these years, you've been through so much. Can't you handle a little setback? H-World Entertainment hasn't closed down yet. You still have plenty of people and resources that you can use to solve our issues. Is there any point of hiding like this? Don't forget, Emma's contract is still with H-World. Her popularity is still H-World's legacy. That's right. She suddenly sneered and sat up as she pulled away from his grip. Emma is still under our control. She shouldn't consider going anywhere. I'll tie her down with this contract. Seeing her recover her fighting spirit, he slowly felt relief. He grabbed his phone and stepped out of the hospital room to return a call to his assistant. What's wrong? Sir, a young girl has shown up at the agency and insists on seeing Emma. She keeps screaming that a life is on the line. She doesn't seem to be just a fan. Because Emma belonged to H-World, the young girl went directly to there. However, she had no idea her decision would cause Emma's destruction. Did you ask her what's wrong? She doesn't want to tell us, the assistant replied. But from the looks of it, it's really urgent. She refuses to leave the lobby. Let me handle it when I get back. He hung up the phone before returning to the room. Charlotte had already changed her clothes. I'm going back to the agency. 
He grabbed her belongings, and they returned to H-World under the protection of security. As they entered the lobby, Lucas's assistant was standing at the entrance. As soon as he spotted Lucas, he immediately approached and pointed to the girl pacing back and forth. That's her. Lucas nodded. After escorting Charlotte to her office, he returned to question the girl. Miss, I've heard you're urgently looking for Emma. What's the matter? The long-haired girl quickly stood up and replied, I'm looking for her to save a life. Save a life? Can you give me her contact details? She asked sincerely. I hope you can help me. He remained silent for a few seconds before replying, Sorry, I'm the agency's director, and Emma's our model. For Emma's safety, I can't reveal her private information. However, you can tell me everything, and I'll pass the message on to Emma. As for whether she'll get in touch with you, that's her decision. The girl was a little distressed, but she understood his restrictions. So, she told him everything. Emma promised to save someone, but I can't tell you who it is. This person is currently in a critical state. That's why I've come to H-World. I already tried to contact her through the radio and multiple other avenues. But she's too famous these days. Contacting her isn't easy. I hope you can tell her, no matter what the Davis family has done to her, this person is innocent. Since she promised to save her, she shouldn't go back on her word. What sickness are we talking about? Why isn't the hospital helping? He asked. If the hospital could help, I wouldn't be looking for Emma. I really hope you can relay my message. Thank you. After speaking, the girl wrote down her contact details and handed them to him before shaking his hand. She then left the lobby. He looked at the phone number in his hand and, without a word, crumpled up the note and threw it straight into the trash. Davis family, he wondered. Returning to his office, he immediately instructed his assistant to investigate Nathan, who turned out to have a younger sister, more importantly, a sister with a serious illness. After seeing the information from his assistant, he leaned back in his chair, filled with satisfaction from his good luck. Emma, he mused. Let's see who the last one standing really is. Of course, he had no intention of passing the girl's plea to Emma. In London, Emma was doing a street fashion photo shoot. As the model who appeared in JK's finale, she skyrocketed in popularity within a short period and received an unimaginable number of offers. Eric lounged on the side of the road, dressed in a trench coat. He had simply followed the photography team and secretly watched over his wife. After finishing the shoot, she looked for him, only to find that he had disappeared. She retrieved her phone from Lisa to message him. Where did you go? Am I not allowed to go to the bathroom? He laughed at his own joke. She smiled as she teased him back. Don't run around wildly, or else I might decide to go home alone. Despite both being in London, Luke was extremely busy while Eric relaxed. As his boss strolled the street, Luke attended video conferences on his behalf in the hotel noting down the important information for him. I'm going to have a migraine too if Emma continues like this, Luke griped to himself. As for the reporter from her vision, he had lost track of Emma over the last couple of days. After careful investigation, he finally got a hold of her latest schedule and was rushing to the scene of her shoot. Her schedule's so secretive. She couldn't possibly just be working, he thought. On top of that, with his persistent clinging, she'd still managed to shake him off and return to New York, proving how cautious she was. However, the more cautious she was, the more curious he felt. 
he refused to believe that she would forever remain this alert. I'm certain, the reporter insisted, the man who dropped her off at the airport in Mexico will make another appearance. Episode 200, Taking Care of Things Together In order to find out about Margot's exact condition, Lucas instructed someone to retrieve the note that had been scrunched up and thrown in the bin. He then secretly found the girl's address. She hadn't expected Lucas to show up at her house. Assuming he had a message from Emma, she quickly and cheerily led him into the house. Are you here to tell me that Margot will be saved? Lucas looked at the naive expression on her face and slowly curved his lips upward. Can you tell me Margot's current condition? The girl thought for a moment before sitting down on the sofa next to him. She hesitantly started to explain the situation. I met her in high school, and we later went to study abroad together. Unfortunately, her kidneys weren't working well, and we had no luck looking for a compatible donor. Eventually, her illness worsened, so we decided to return to America. At the time, Nathan brought Emma along to do a compatibility test. After all the failed compatibility tests in the past, she was the only one who was completely compatible. The girl lowered her head and sighed. Afterwards, we found out about the incident with Global Pictures. Margot knew her brother was in the wrong, so she didn't bring up Emma's promise again. She knew the Davis family owed her too much. Because of this, she had a huge argument with the rest of her family. Right now, she's all alone in the hospital. Actually, I wanted to look for Emma a long time ago, but Margot kept stopping me. And her condition has just continued to get worse. I'm seriously afraid she won't be able to make it. I had no choice but to look for Emma. She belongs to your agency, right? That's why I came looking for you. The girl was an outsider to the industry and had no idea how dark and dirty it was. She had simply found out Emma belonged to H-World, but had no idea how bad the model's relationship with the company was. I've tolerated it for long enough. Since Emma made a promise, she should follow through. Even the doctor has said that a person can continue normal bodily functions with just one kidney. After listening to the girl's explanation, Lucas weighed up the situation in his mind before asking, Is she in a serious condition? Her kidneys are failing and dialysis has not been enough to alleviate her pain, the girl replied, her voice choking. Lucas nodded. I've already contacted Emma. However, she doesn't seem to recall anything about this matter and hasn't given me a proper answer. Also, she's currently in London, and I have no way of speaking with her in person. The girl's face turned pale as she bit her lip. In the end, she nodded her head. No matter what happens, thank you anyway. You're welcome. He stood up to leave. As he walked away, he heard the girl mumble a few words behind him. He informed her, people from the entertainment industry really can't be trusted. And Emma is no different. I feel bad that Margot was actually concerned about her. The girl had no idea that Lucas had never contacted Emma. This wasn't the first time he'd done something like this. Keeping secrets and deliberately provoking both sides of an issue was his usual method of dealing with things. It didn't matter to him, even if someone's life was involved. It was nighttime in London. Emma was preparing dinner for Eric in the manor they were staying in. To help relieve his tiredness, Emma limited her husband to just two hours of work per day. The remainder of his time was spent on accompanying her at work and releasing stress. He leaned against the kitchen doorway with his arms crossed as he watched Emma busily cooking. He smiled. This is how it feels to be looked after by someone. It turns out that Emma has such a powerful side to her, he thought. 
Eric had always prevented her from entering the kitchen and was especially afraid of her holding knives. Therefore, everything they bought in London was pre-prepared. After quickly putting the ingredients together, dinner was ready. After eating, the couple sat on the sofa, leaning against each other as they watched a movie. Emma had always been the one to lie in Eric's arm. However, he was the one lying on her thigh at that moment, using it as a pillow. Once they felt tired, they headed for bed and lay facing each other. Emma reached out her hand to stroke his face and spoke with a soft voice. Did you know you really scared me? Uh-huh. He gently nodded his head. She hadn't been simply scared. She was frightened to the point of tears. What will you do from now on? Will you hide all by yourself and endure the pain? Eric looked into her eyes as he finally wrapped his arm around her neck and pulled her into his embrace, placing her head on his chest. I'm so glad to have you. What else could I wish for in this life, he thought. I already have a person who constantly has me in her heart. Emma lay on top of his body and buried her face in his chest. She reached out her arms to wrap around his waist. Eric, please, don't get sick. Uh-huh. At that moment, he felt like a king who had been domesticated. To the outside world, he was fierce and powerful. But in front of Emma, he was allowed to show his weakness and be the one who was treasured and loved. It turned out that the relationship between a man and woman could also be like this. Whether they were the one to love or be loved, they were equally happy. After my work is done tomorrow, we'll return to New York. Eric shook his head. In terms of our lifestyle, I can listen to you. However... When it comes to work, you must listen to me. Now that you've worked for JK, I've sent a huge offer to your email. You're currently in a place where you can progress. If you miss this opportunity or reject it, then your work with JK will all go to waste. But... I only had a migraine. It's not like it's a constant pain. Emma remained silent as she weighed up the pros and cons. She knew as well as Eric that if she were to miss out on this international offer, she wouldn't know how long it would take before an opportunity like this came around again. In that case, you should rest for another two days. As I said before, when it comes to our lifestyle, I'll listen to you. Eric didn't argue as he whispered in her ear. I'll take care of what happens outside our home while you take care of the inside. She smiled as she found a comfortable spot in his arms and fell asleep. After an entire day of work, she was exhausted. She was only one step away from becoming an international supermodel. She really hoped that everything would run smoothly. However, she was unaware that Lucas had already planted a ticking time bomb. Compared to the warm and comforting atmosphere in the bedroom, the study felt quite miserable to Luke and Lisa. One of them had to deal with the matters at Kaleidoscope, while the other had to look through Emma's contract. However, while Luke was working hard, Lisa couldn't help but smile as she peeked at him from behind. I hope you enjoyed the episodes. Thank you for listening. See you on the next episodes. Please don't forget to share, like, and subscribe.